Hello world, I'm just here to make you think. This CEO Philly Trenches Hockey Raw coming at you live and direct with this bum exclusive video. This Philly Trenches talk at the dark episode 627. It's our 627 episode of Philly Trenches talk at the dark. Now tonight, we're going to talk about North Philly and the connection with New York rappers like Jada Kiss, Lil C, um, Dave East, and um, the whole locks, you know? See? And we're going to talk about Gully TV, the hate he got for other YouTubers, and the slick stuff he always keeps saying about me. We're going to get into all that. Now, in this photo right here, that I got off Instagram for my young boy page, you know what I mean? Of Jada Kiss coming down the hood like that. You know, Lil C from Bad Boys and all that. You like that? Well, how are these New York rappers so comfortable to come down North Philly in my neighborhood? Because my young boys, I schooled, man. I schooled my young boys, man. You know, before I left the hood alone and passed the torch. I schooled them, man. They learned a lot from me, man. They, they learned how to not only get money, they learned how to invest their money. They, they know how to politic with other people They got money. You know what I'm saying? They know how to bring a lot of positive energy to the hood. You know, Joey Jahad, D. Jones, which are two of the our local rappers that brought Meat Mills down there, Oskino. Um, Quilly Mills, and when y'all first started hearing about Quilly Mills, he was in Joey Jahad. They was on this block. They was on Double D Block with D. Jones in them. I'm going to show y'all right now and just so y'all can see. Now, that's Lil C from New York. That's D. Jones from North Philly, Double D Block. My young boy Yopsy in them. That's Jada Kiss. Yeah, I mean, Vito, China Man. Now, Man, China, man, the same age. So I can't call him my young boy. But everybody else on this photo is my young boy. But said J.D. Kiss and Lil C because, you know, they from New York. But as you see, that's my block. That's the block I control. That's the neighborhood I controlled when I came out of jail in the 90s, early 2000, 2010. It's just that I left the game alone because... I got tired of doing the same thing. I got tired. I got tired of selling drugs to my neighborhood. You know what I mean? And my neighborhood is my family. But the youngins, they they didn't always. You know what I mean, was in the mix, but they always was into the music. You know, so they passion for the music. They passion and they dedication to the rap game. You know, is without saying. So that's why these qualified and quality rappers from New York come to Philadelphia. And they mingle with Philly rappers that's really down to earth like that. You feel me? Because let me tell you something. For them to be that comfortable to be in the trenches like that in North Philly, it got to be love and respect there. You feel me? And they always come down there. They come to the block parties. They come to the parties. They come to the cookouts. They're around. And they, they make videos in the hood and everything. You know, and this neighborhood is known to make a lot of money, man. And when I was out there in the 80s and 90s, 2000, 2010, I was really doing my thing. And my name is always spoke about in they ciphers and they conversations of who was who and what was what, who had the most females, or who had what car, or who controlled the neighborhood when they had it the best, and who was the most feared, and who took the most money, and all that, who did what. A lot of my youngins, they witnessed, they eyewitnessed a lot of shit. So they be out there talking about a lot of shit. And my name is always mentioned for a lot of shit because a few of them situations, my fuckers was around. They saw that shit. I didn't even know they was around. Be surprised who be around when you perform, you know? But when I watched Gully TV video earlier today, right, I was on this live fucking with him. You know what I mean? Like he fuck with me on my lives. But when he was in the kitchen... <laughs> You heard his mom making, moving the pots and pans again and all that. Making this big dumb nigga some dessert or something. Some banana pudding or some wafers or something. 
he got to think, he got people thinking that he got some type of chef or some girl is making him some food and say, no, I don't want to show everybody the, my type of females I got. Nigga, you ain't got no female. That's your mother, nigga. And everybody in every PA know that you live with your mother, nigga. You try to make it seem like I live with my mom. No, I visit my mom. I help my mom out because she at the age she need my help. No, but you live with your mom. You argue with your mom. You cuss in your mom's house. Tomorrow it's the month of Ramadan, and every other word is a cuss word out your mouth, and the sun don't be down. You understand what I'm saying, y'all? I know I came on here a little late, but better late than never, you know? Now, when I think about Philadelphia and the, and the New York connection of rap music, um, I just don't think about J.D. kissing them. Because when Ram Squad was around, and it was the most talked about rap group probably in America at one time, you know, and in the East Coast, as well as Philadelphia, Ram Squad had Method Man in the Wu-Tang Clan down Richard Island, like, and you know, it was moving around Richard Island like they was from Richard Island, and Ram Squad was moving around New York like they was from New York. And how I know this? Because they were dealing with Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim. Yeah, they was coming down there to see Philly nigga. They messed with Tom Tom. They was messing with Lil Whitey from Diamond Street Projects. Like, when I was in prison, Philly was doing from 95 to like 98, the beginning of 99. Oh, Philly was on another level out here in the entertainment business and the rap game, basketball. We had the and one thing going on. Well, yeah, the and one came a little later, but around 2009, 2008. Like, but. Even in our start break, we had Al Iverson. Even before that, right? Philly, Virginia, D.C., stemming from the Freaknik and all that. The Atlanta Freaknik, everybody going down to Atlanta. It was like that culture continued on, not only through hip hop, through the NBA, through rap music, and through R&B. And everybody was somebody in every city got together at parties and clubs and all that. Like, if the Sixers was playing Atlanta and they was home in Philadelphia, is a is is a few, like two strip clubs that anybody can go to, and there's a few nightclubs that anybody can go to. And the Milana dude that's coming from Atlanta, wherever they goons, drug dealers, whatever they into, when they come like far as with their team to watch them play the Sixers, they know Iverson here. So they gonna go to them parties. They going politic. They going. And they, think about it. Two thousand one, we had the R Star break. R Star NBA weekend when it was in Philadelphia, and come on, we had Iverson. Everybody was over here. Motherfuckers we was meeting connects and everything. Philly was lit. I was in prison, but my team was out here representing. Man, like everybody I know that was out here, they turned it up. They was out here getting money. I'm getting the pitches. Yeah, you know I mean, I ain't really want no money orders like that because I was I already had money coming in. It's just that I wanted anything to be right when I came home. So when I came home, I can go down to this block right here and eat. Yeah, you know I mean, you see how they smiling, man. That's a rich man smile right there. Yeah, you know I mean, look at D Jones, man. Look at a little seed that was with Biggie Smalls and Biggie Smalls got killed. Bad boys in my neighborhood. Look at Jada Kiss. One of the best battle rappers, best freestyle rappers in the business. And he in my hood. Yeah, you know I mean? D. Jones next up. You feel me? Rude this shit. I'm talking about that was me. I come home like Frank White, tell put the black gloves on and say y'all got the thirsty to stop hustling. They get in, they get in, they get in line like soldiers. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a real nigga. Come on. Then who come through? Who come see all the bad shorties, all the drug dealers and drug lords come through to see me that know me? My young boy see something different. Like, damn, hot. Got the block. Look what he bringing around. He bringing everything. I'm telling they coming out. That's why everybody in the neighborhood wanna come around the hood. From me from Diamond, 12 from Dolphin to Gamble Me. We want 10 from Dolphin. We want 10 from Susquehanna. Delwine and Dolphin, we right there. But anybody come from me from Diamond. You know what I mean? 7 from Montgomery. 12 from Susquehanna. Um, what's that? 10 from, um, 10 from Norris. 10 from York. 
11 Norris, 11th and Cumberland, 17th and Cumberland. They coming from all over to gamble me. To get their gamble on, because they know I'm tearing it up. And I think most of them trying to really get me out the way. I already knew what that was about. You know what I mean? I, you know, I love them and everything, but I peak game. If we get him out the way, why would you want to get me out the way? So I go back to Robin and tear the neighborhood into pieces? Think about it. When I went to jail, even though I was getting money, I was known in that neighborhood for taking people money in that neighborhood. Drug lords. Like, really taking them to war as a young boy. Yeah, you know, I had all the drug lords in one corner on 12th and Susquehanna that night, 1990. When me and my twin brother, Keith, and Wayne was together, and them girls in South Philly had that yellow, that dark, or the brown fleet with the brown rag top. And I jumped out and told them niggas what it was. And they all ran. Then they start bang shooting at us from, from a block away, zoomed up on us and all that. We came right the fuck back down there, man, and tore them out the frame. That's when they started dropping all them cases on me. Somebody stuck up Jesse Barr. Somebody got killed. Somebody killed the inquiry man. All the shit they was trying to give me, Kesey or Khalif. We were the main three suspects and all the shit that was going on in, the, in that neighborhood. All because of what I was doing before I went to jail. You know? So when I went to jail and did all that time and came home, it's like, damn, twin home. What are you going to do now? All my homies in position, they really getting money. They said, hot, we got the work for you. Where you going to put it at? I ain't like the fuck down here before I got what down here. They come down, we shoot dice, we beat everybody. His people's already down there getting money. His people's already a big time drug lord down there. So they like, bam, so everybody know that fuck with me where I'm getting my work from. I'm getting it from two different people, one from North, one from Frankfurt. And they moving that shit for me while I'm in a halfway house. You know, but when I got out the halfway house, because sometimes you got to show motherfuckers that you really built like that still. Because a lot of people, they know your reputation, but they want to see you perform. So I had to perform a few times, man. I ain't really want to, but once I got back into performing, I'm talking about I went to go find the roughest, toughest, baddest, stick up kid on that, in that part of North Philly. And they started being with me. And I wanted to see what they really built like me. And I knew once I turned it up, they couldn't do the shit I do, man. Like, some motherfuckers make a couple of hours with you and then they want to chill and be with their girl and their family. Me, I keep hunting. And then when I turn up, I don't care who you is, where you at, and none of that shit, man. Like, how, they, like, they, some people thought I was crazy, and I ain't the fuck crazy. I just know what people respect, and that's violence, man. You can't sit there and talk to nobody and say kubaya to them and mix a lot with them and think anything cool. No, you got to show them, man. You got to put the fear of God back in them. You got to make sure soon they see you, they scared. Not no, like, trying to assume that they scared. Not trying to have, give them second thoughts of being tough. No. So you just do something they, that they won't do in broad daylight. Yeah, so once I did that and was getting the money, I saw the trenches in another, another light. Even though I was getting money, I'm really getting money now. And now I'm starting to see what these drug dealers were saying. I'm like, these motherfuckers getting all this money down here. And they was getting mad because I was down here shaking something down. And that wasn't even really doing anything. It's like you're trying to shake a tree and only a few leaves fall, but it's millions of leaves that ain't fall yet. And then you are the one that's getting money from this tree. Now you see it from a different perspective. Now you ain't robbing. Now you hustling. So you, is a difference from being a stick-up kid and snatching people up, putting them in a the trunk and snatching them up and trying to get some ransom money for them compared to selling drugs and making money every day. So when I seen the amount of money being made, I got a little upset and furious because I knew I was getting shortchanged when I was out here taking money. But I knew that wasn't going to be long term for me, man, because I ain't, you know, I sold drugs, but I ain't like it. You know, I just wanted, you know, you come home, you want to see if you can get on your feet, you chasing after the bag, and then when you get on your feet, then when you become the man, it's like you was never locked up because you might think about it once in a blue, but you're like, man, fuck, I'm on top of my game. And you ask yourself, Who's out here before you? Because I'm getting the money now. 
smoking them was out here. DOD, my cousin them from the rap group, they was getting money out hundred the street. Niggas was getting money all over. And they was really getting money, like making like thirty thousand a, a night in like three different, four different crack houses they had. So they getting that type of money. They got them type of workers. And when you get that type of money, you got shifts. You might pay somebody once a week seven hundred dollars, no matter how much they moving. But if you think about it, seven hundred dollars is more than a regular job. When people look at it, making what twenty eight hundred dollars a month compared to making twelve hundred a month or a thousand dollars a month at a job, or you might get paid off the bundles. You might just be making a thousand dollars or three thousand dollars every day. So imagine making three thousand dollars every day in a crack house. You know, you might grow a heart to want to kill somebody for your boss. So while I'm locked up and I hear my young little cousins and them in the rap group DOD, I already know about Ram Squad because before I went to jail, I seemed to perform on the stage. Easter. Easter 94. Like April 8th, I think. Yeah. How many Easter's ago was that? Damn. That was 30 years ago. 30 Easter's ago. They locked me up on Easter night 30 Easter's ago. Cause they said I shot McDonald's up on Broad and Diamond, which was like was like a let out. When I seen Ram Squad perform early that night at Dance's nightclub. I knew there was gonna be somebody. I went to jail. But when I went to jail from 94 to 99, July 20 to July 14th. 1999 is when I got out. But when I was locked up during that time, everybody was out here getting money. Everybody turned up, man. So when I came home, they went from little like regular kingpin drug dealers to drug lords with all the weight and everything. And I come right home and they look out for me and they put me right back in position. So now I'm eating again. I'm really rolling. I'm talking about this shit is organized. You know, nobody disrespect me. Motherfuckers were scared to death of me. And they had, you know, a lot of love for me. So I ain't had to worry about nothing in the neighborhood, but it was so much shit that was happening that I didn't know about. Like, I didn't know all these other crack houses was around me, one making 20000 at night, these other crack houses around. Because I'm just in and out, you know what I mean, getting my money and rolling. Going spending time with my family, my girl, my, you know, and all that old shit. And going out, having a good time, enjoying life. But you had drug dealers in the neighborhood that made their business to know what other drug dealers was doing, how much money he was making, how many people work for him, what kind of shit they moving. If they moving shit outside of a house, if they moving shit on a block, if they moving shit in the house, and if you got a crack house, it's like that's a gold mine because that means it's a 24-hour thing. That means people can go in there, they can rent a room out, they can have sex in there and pay to have sex, they can pay to get high in there, Thinking all type of shit goes on in the crack house that you don't know about because it's in the privacy of somebody's home compared to somebody being on the street corner just selling drugs until the nighttime come and they just go in the house or they might just be outside selling drugs and but they might not do it every night. Or if they do, they don't be they don't do graveyard shifts 24 hours. But the crack house, you might have three or four shifts. So if you got a crack house. You're going to try to get some money, slide your shit in there through somebody. That's how dudes is doing. They hustle, but they get cool with some else and sell their shit too. And you'll never know. Or they might save up some money and get somebody to cook some shit up for them or buy it cooked up and start selling their shit in there too. Well, you can tell when the money goes down. You know I mean? Some nights it might be $1,000 you might make overnight. $2,000 all depends because, you know, there's a lot of people in that neighborhood making money. So if you make a thousand dollars that night overnight, that's good money. So, but you still might make a total of like three thousand a day to two thousand a day, and two thousand a day making money is not a lot to Kensington, the Northeast, and Frankfurt. But still, two thousand a day is sixty thousand a month. But people don't look at that because they get greedy. And they focus their attention on that crack house, like the John Budweiser. Budweiser was a crack house a few blocks away from the block I had. The crack house I had. Right? I'm going to show you the crack house I had. Now, you got individuals out there. 
They had to find out about a crack house and burn it the fuck down and get it blown up or something. Ten for Susquehanna. It's four. Tenth and Susquehanna Street. I'm gonna show it to Here you. Here is a map of North Tenth Street and West Susquehanna Avenue, Philadelphia. North Philly, my stomping ground. But I'm gonna show you the block, give y'all that scenario, break it all down, y'all. You know, and this way it all started. Though. How the heck we get on C Street? That's crazy. I did not say C Street. Y'all see that shit, man? I got, all right, we back on North Susquehanna. I don't know how we was on C in Sus Somerset. Now, this would all started at. Something big happened on this point in the summertime. Shit got crazy out there. That's what I'm gonna tell y'all. But you see this factory, we've been here for years. This is a hanger factory. My uncle worked in there, man. And one of few of my little cousins, but this factory helped take care of a lot of people, man. He's one of the last factories left in Philadelphia. But this is Tim for Susquehanna. I call it Tim for Getting It. This was Meek Mills and Joey Jahad first started off at the barbershop. I first selling drugs right here in front of this house right here back in 93. When nobody else out here selling drugs. Aaron McKee used to play basketball right here. All on this block. The one that played for the Sixers, Aaron McKee. My brother Safe used to sit here with it on the step right here with his friends. And they used to have their little meetings. Now look at how this step is. You can't even see nobody sitting down. So you walk by, you won't even see them. And this is my Aunt Lucy house, which is my grandma's right here. This is where everything started at. When I came home in 99, everybody used to be standing out here in front of this Chinese store or on the side of here, like 20 motherfuckers every day. Boom. Now, this is the crack house I had right here. See this house right here? This is the house that I turned into a crack house. It had a towel on the ground. It's like a real house inside. Lights on and everything. Lamps, everything. Playstations, big TVs and everything. Right now, now I'm gonna show you where my aunt Nisi live at, as well as the Blue Notes, Teddy Pendergraph, and all of them. McFadden and Whitehead, they all came from this block. This is my aunt Nisi house. You got the Flyers house still on this block. See, stainless steel door. No, stainless steel. And right next door is my pad house. The light skinned last member of the Blue Nets, Lloyd. They say they grew up in this house right here with their mom and Pops, the leader of the Blue Notes. He also lived there. You know? It's calling me, man. Let me make a do not disturb real fast. This is crazy. It's my fault, y'all. I gotta make sure this stuff go down. Anyway, we gotta wait till I stop ringing, though. Anyway. But well, that was my phone. That wasn't even in this phone. My fault, y'all. Anyway, this one of the last, the leader of the Blue Notes used to live here, too. Now, up the street from that location was McFadden and Whitehead. McFadden and Whitehead used to live, Whitehead used to live in one of these houses right here, probably this house for this lot. And Gene McFadden, he lived in Leather Cumberland Projects. You feel me? So I used to have my meetings in that house up here. In this house right here. My aunt house. All my meetings in this house. But she lived in this house first. Was turned into a church. She moved out of this house like in 75. And then she moved across the street in this house. But they have all the parts. my cousin Michael Burgey, her son. Now, he the one who used to cook everybody shit up back in the day. Everybody shit up. He used to cook up back in the day. My cousin Michael Burgey right here. Right up in this crib. Or in this crib. Everybody's shit. And up here used to be these mirrors on both sides of these windows. My uncle Smiley used to live here. Before he got killed. He's in the Black Mafia. All the parties used to be in this house. They used to have real cocaine parties, man. Real cocaine parties. What's going on? 
tapping in. What's the main not known block in the hood? Richard Allen. Richard Allen, main block, Tiffin Brown. Brown Street, 12th and Poplar, Tiffin Brown. But this used to be a factory right here across from my house. But they tore it down and built some new shit here. But all down here, and I'm going to show y'all something. When I was two years old, right, I lived in this hundred down here. Right here, right? Two years old, I lived in this hundred right across from the playground. Now, look. This is the playground that I lived at. I lived in back of, right? This playground right here, right? Now, they used to have sandboxes. Hold up. They used to have sandboxes, the swimming pool back here and everything. My brother was three, four years old, four years old, and he busted dude in the head with a bottle a 40 bottle for throwing me in the water. And I came out right here. Me and my brother Daryl ran out of here. And we lived like exactly in one of these houses right here back in the day before we moved to 23rd and Cyber, right? And the crazy thing is, I left out of this house, walked up this street, two years old, and the police was parked right here. And when I got like right near this corner, he grabbed me and put me in a police car and took me to the police station. But I was trying to go up the street to my niece. I was right here. I knew how to get to a crib. But when the cops saw me, you know what he did? He uh, took me to the police station. But I was on my way to my niece. I was right here. That's how I got in the police station. You know, it wasn't that I ran away and then I just left out the house. But this is where all that shit started. I'm about to take y'all to the block where y'all just seen Jada kissing them at, right? Now, mind, that's my, my own house right there. And this whole neighborhood is our house. I mean, our family neighborhood, right? Now, Puff, D.C. Puff is up from up the street, two blocks up. But this block right here, Deline Dolphin. This where y'all seen JD kids at. That's Joey Jahad grandmom house. This when the stretch limousine was parked right here. And 50 Cent wanted to see Joey Jahad before the incident happened to him. We was getting money right out here. This was the block. I came down here. Meek Mills was right here in the corner rapping for Oskino. But I didn't know he's battling Joey Jahad. And this is the block right here. Del Iron Dolphin. This is exactly where y'all see the mat, they was just on the step right here. See everybody out here now? My youngins, fly cars and everything. They was right here. Now look, y'all remember that, right? Now I'm going to go and show y'all. We should go right back to it. See? It's the same wall. So, you know what I mean? Same neighborhood. Same hood. I'm going to just take y'all back a different. That's up Susquehanna. And I tour around this whole neighborhood. Not like really, like literally. And this the block he was on. This the block Twine from. My homie from Low Life that passed away. Him and Mikey was fighting on this block. And I stepped in and that's how all we became best friends with him. Boosting 10 years old. Come up this block. And you right back here near that wall. I ran all this shit, man. All this was me. This whole neighborhood. But I just got tired of selling drugs. Everybody work out. My cousin only work out like niggas work out. Niggas stay in shape because a few niggas was locked up. Twine lived right here. And we used to knock on the door. Me, Tom, Tom from Red Squad, my twin brother Mikey. In the 80s, we used to, Twine used to always be the last one to come the fuck outside. We coming all the way from Frankfurt. But this is the strip. Dave East, J.D. Kissing. They come to Delha, Delha and Dolphin. You know, look at my youngins, man. My little cousin. They're like my little cousin Mike, Mike right there. My youngins, man, you know. They still out holding it down summertime. The grill out and all that. But we first, we was right here though. We was on like, like all right here. 
all right here, like on the steps. You know what I mean? That's what we do. You feel me? Everybody out, politicking. Met Quilly Mills. He was in this neighborhood. Toys come up. We used to gamble right here on these, right here. Or right here. You know what I mean? I used to come around that corner. You know what I mean? My cousin, I'm still looking at the projects. When DC Park was home, and he had all this, he had all this shit right here. This the Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles made a playground right here. I'm gonna show y'all. The Eagles made it. See, see that? The Eagles made that playground. See, Eagles. The Philadelphia Eagles. We had McNabb. They made this playground in '99, just before I got the Lexus. And I was out here with him. Took pictures of everything. Sent him upstate. This is my cousin that was still living in the project. Noonie Mim's sister live on Arizona Street or Colorado, one of these little streets right here. Because I used to go with his niece, Sharita Mims. And my little cousins and them live right here, the corner house. They lived in the building at first, but they lived in the corner house and was running all these young boys around here. My little cousins. And my little young boy, Nard. Nard, this we look at Nard beat me out all this fucking money. I'm gonna show y'all a picture of Nard. I got y'all Nard. Nard made a lot of money. He had all and one thing about him, he had some fine looking females, man. I gotta see if I can show y'all on the picture right here. If I can show you Nard. This Nard right here. That's Nard. Nard with the guitar. You ever heard Hattie talk? You ever heard Hattie rap about Nard? That's Nard. You know what I mean? Look at V though. You know what I mean? If you know, you know. Twin. He's my youngins, man. This nigga, before he got locked up, right? We gambling. Right in back of the prize, I got to show y'all. Levin Art. I mean, Levin Company. He beat me out my money, right? So I went home to get some more money. He got locked up. I was mad as shit. Do you hear me? I was about to bail that nigga out, man. Just to win my money back from him. <laughs> Then he came home, had one of them local motherfucking, uh, he had one of them, uh, look at Dave E, see, in my hood. I ain't lie to y'all, niggas be around my hood like that, you know, little peanut, my little cousin peanut, if you know, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, my hood was hurt because I, you know what I mean, look, Dave East. My young buck, JJ, Yopsy. I can't see who that is. But they in my hood, man. Like, my hood is shit, man. My hood really is shit, though. I just don't, I just can't see myself, yeah, you know I mean, hugging it no more, man. You know, some people, that's all they know. I mean, I can't knock them for it, man. It's just that I'm, you know, past the baton in my youngin. Yeah, you know I mean, JD kids come through all the time. Yeah, you know I mean, little C, you no. Know? Yeah, you know I mean, D Jones still rapping in the big dogs yard. So you know what I mean, like, and that's just like one neighborhood that I that I'm really like associated with, like my birthright, Erie Avenue, Frankfurt, South Philly, Southwest. Yeah, you know I mean, like. Logan, you know what I mean, uptown, like, I can really, like, go in neighborhoods and just give you some, like, some full, like, information about me and how I roamed in them hoods, man, and how I was in them hoods, which, though, I can be in that hood, I can make money, I can produce a baby, and all that, you feel me, what's going on, exactly, Deep View Media, what's going on with you? I'm just giving them the, the insight because let me tell you something, man. I ain't got to lie about my hood, man. When Joey Jahad said Hockey Raw said it's dinner time, you can't get a pinch of mine, I'm Hockey Raw. When they called him Riviera Hattie, I gave him the four and a half so he could buy that Riviera. Man, he painted it because it was burgundy or red or something. He painted it, painted it blue. But, you know, I'm really him, man. Tomorrow, people going to be texting each other. Yo, hot man. Yo, such and such. 
Philly Trenches had just you, you block on the situation and say that was his situation first. They won't say facts. It was. You know what I mean? It still is my hood. It's just that I ain't trying to just, I can't do the same shit I used to do. You know what I mean? Not because I'm 51. It's just that it's like me trying to go back to school and learn timetables all over again. When I'm on, when I'm past trigonometry, when I'm on calculus. You know, I can't do the same thing all the time. There might be some good money. But in the back of my mind, I'm going to know what these, you know, what being in the trenches is doing to my people. Because if I get in the trenches, it's got to be some money made. And, you know, when I get money, people suffer because people are going to use drugs and people are going to fuck their lives up even more. Because I really go at it hard. I really make sure I make sure I make sure. You understand when I'm down there? I really get that paper. Motherfuckers come out of nowhere. Like, when I'm down there, you'll see motherfuckers you ain't seen in a long time will pop up. Trying to get at the money or trying to get high or whatever. Because I looked out. When I used to be down, there, ain't no the fiends down there tell me, damn, I wish you come back around here, man. This shit ain't been right since you left. Because I looked out for the hood, man. I made sure motherfuckers got their bills paid. I made sure motherfuckers that didn't have no money had money to get high or make sure they got high. I mean, I'm keeping it real, man. Motherfuckers treat the neighborhood fucked up. They treat the fiends fucked up. You know, you supposed to treat them like the kings and queens they are. You know, but they want to fight the fiends, argue with the fiends, and all that old bullshit when that ain't what I'm about. Because without them, how you going? You ain't going to make the money if they, ain't gonna, if they don't bring it to you. So I graduated from that. I used to come back down and all take the spaceship, two, three in the morning, come from the club. I go right on the block. What's up? They be out there. I'm like, damn, Hockey Raw, we miss you, man. Damn, we love you, man. When you coming back down? When I tell you, they were sad when I left. If I pop up, they start looking sad. Like, damn, huh? When you coming back around, man? Like, and, and I didn't know it affected people, man. Like, like, it's like, your big brother here and everything is going right. And soon when I leave, shit go to chaos. When nobody get robbed, everybody was being respected because I was around. See, motherfucker, in this day and time, in the trenches, everybody fake love each other. Everybody fake respect each other because there's money involved. The motherfuckers really respected me because who the fuck I was and how I was. And I was fair. But everybody team up because it's fake. And then when you're in a situation, a motherfucker might look out for you because anybody know about it. And But a lot of times, niggas be faking and they won't even look out for you, man. I had to go down here and make sure my main man who put me on was looking out, for, was being looked out for because they fleed him and everybody thought the boy was looking out for him until I came down there and turned into the hawk. And all of a sudden, everybody wants to start looking out for my man again and all that. And, and then I come down there and perform like the hawk that I am. Damn, then hockey down, he's back in his duffel. And he putting in work. And niggas be shook. Cause they don't know how to take me, man. Cause they know I don't give a fuck. I'm unpredictable. They don't know, they know I don't give a fuck about selling drugs or, or making that money. They know I can walk up and just start eliminating niggas. Right in front of anybody and won't give a fuck. And dare somebody say something about it. Dare somebody speak on it. And that's real shit. I ain't making that up. I could turn in that fast and be like, y'all corrupt in my neighborhood. Y'all still poisoning my neighborhood. My family and friends. And I can chastise them and be like, oh, why you do that? Because the, look what the fuck y'all doing. That's why. And if you question it again, nigga, you could join me. And niggas just shut the fuck up. And I'm dead serious, man. Because maybe then they get there, wake the fuck up, like, damn, hot right. Because I am the fuck right. Making that money all that time, he ain't really do nothing with the money, but still doing the same shit. Selling drugs, killing people slowly, immaturely, you know what I mean? Indirectly. Could be putting that shit in this person's system, and then when they have sex with a woman, and them drugs in their system, and that baby come out fucked up. Now you fucked up a whole generation of DNA. Now the DNA is altered. Or the person go to jail, get killed. Next thing you know, you fucked up somebody's life, somebody's family. And that shit happens everywhere. That's why I couldn't be a part of it no more, man. Because I know the seriousness behind doing shit like that. And I made some real good money and left the neighborhood and still made more money than that in other neighborhoods and came back and showed them. 
that is bigger than just being on this in this neighborhood killing your people. You know? And I'm not like like throwing nobody under the bus and making nobody look bad. This this goes to any neighborhood that sell drugs though, to their own people. You know, at first it was cool to do on some hip hop shit, get money, G money, Al Capone type shit. But Al Capone or Scarface wasn't selling drugs to his own people, his own family. His own family, friends, and neighborhood and shit like that. You know, we don't look at that when we hear the rap songs and hear motherfuckers in the rap songs selling drugs and all that and partying. But they never talk about the people that's being affected by these drug sales. By all this illusion, man. And then look what we mimic. The shit that entertainers do. And then they get in trouble. And it ain't been as all out there. And we the first ones to crucify my own people. And the white men say, damn, if they disrespect their own people and crucify them, then we doing the right thing. And you don't see white people doing it to their own kind. They might talk about it for a couple, one or two days, and after that, it's over with. But we, no, we want to make money off it, video, views off of it, subscribers off of it, new subscribers off of it. Like, if, think about the Puff Daddy situation right now. If Puff Daddy wasn't Puff Daddy, if Puff Daddy wasn't Puff Daddy and had that money, would nobody be talking about him? If Meek Mills wasn't a famous rapper, would nobody be talking about him? Because in all reality, there's so many other people that's into that same type of shit. Now, I ain't saying Puff Daddy did anything or Meek Mills, but what they are accused of doing, rich people do it all the time. Anytime you see a politician get caught up in some scandal or something, there's more politicians doing it. They just didn't get caught yet or they're not going to get caught. Same way with the shit with Puff Daddy. There's a lot of millionaires and billionaires in the industry, athletic. TV, radio, everything that's into that same type of shit. They just didn't get caught yet. And if they people do know about it, they know how to hide it or they're paying people off. So when we see shit like that, it shouldn't surprise us. He said, the real goalie TV versus Philly Trades. Yeah, you know what I mean? I want to box that nut, man. He keep talking all this dumb shit in Gully TV. Like, if y'all watch this video, he just keep talking about people, right? And then he keep talking about me. Oh, he poor, he a bum. He live in a ghetto. First of all, okay, my brownstone is in a ghetto. North Philly, okay, all right. But guess what? It costs, you know what I mean? Twin in the jail. Twin in the jail. It costs to live in that house, though. You know? And I'm not always in the ghetto. I'm up the suburbs a lot, too. You know what I mean? Y'all don't see no brick wall behind me, do y'all? Right then. So, you know, I got to look at the, my mom and all that, man. So, you know, I move around, man. So I know how I feel to smell fresh air, to drink fresh water compared to drinking water in the trenches and smelling that air, you know? And a rug. Somebody said I got the best in a rug. Yeah, I mean, no, not in a rug. Somebody said I got the best, yeah, I mean. Saying, yeah, I mean, I got the best, yeah, I mean. Because I'm not to say this, especially from how some weed or something. I said, yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I can say, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm saying, in a full sentence, just using those two words, and it really be describing other shit. And one time, right, I just say it's so good. That's when I had them perks in me, right? When I was making thousands every day with the perks in me. My man, Nell Duels, made the changes in the feds. One day he mimicked me, right? Him and E-Class, they called me on the phone. They was on Express, they was on the highway, on their way over, Atlantic, over New Jersey, I think, or Atlantic City. They was even going to New York, Atlantic City. But on their way there, he called me, put me on the speaker, right? And he was on probably off some weed or something. But he started mimicking me. And he started saying, yeah, I mean, I'm saying. But the way he said it, and I bust out laughing. I said, damn, that's how we be talking. But you know, when you're in the motion and you're moving around, you probably be a little on or pills of weed or whatever. And you talk slick shit all the time. You'd be surprised who will mimic you. And being though I talking so much, I didn't realize I was saying it like fluently. Like I can say, well, I'm gonna, I'm going for example, I'm gonna show y'all what I'm talking about. Now I'm gonna say y'all yeah, I mean and y'all yeah, I'm saying. I'm two words, y'all yeah, I mean, y'all yeah, I'm saying, but I'm using it in a sentence. I'm about the y'all yeah, I mean. You go up and y'all yeah, I'm saying. You know what I mean? Something like that. 
But every word will be them two words. I'm about to go pick up, yeah, you know I mean, so we can go, yeah, you know I'm saying, at yeah, you know I mean, like we did, yeah, you know I'm saying, like we did the other day, like it was a certain time, like I say, and we did something at five o'clock. I like at the same, yeah, when we did it at, yeah, you know I mean, at, yeah, you know I'm saying, like every word. I'm talking about did it so fluently, though. I'm saying I'm a jack of all trades, and the thing is, I didn't know people was mimicking me. But I'm something to mimic, man. I'm thorough. I went in the heart of Southwest Philadelphia, man. For five straight years and was around some real killers and gangsters, man. And I played the Kaiser Sosa role because I didn't want them to know how ferocious I really was. So it's time to be ferocious. So when I got around everybody, I got a chance to see everybody personality. They really opened up to me because I didn't show no threat to them. And I used to gamble against these dudes every day. And there's one old head boy named Kool-Aid. Shout out to Kool-Aid, man. He used to beat me out of $200 every day. I would lose $200, exactly $200 to this dude every day. Not every other day, every day. So, you know, my first month didn't gamble because I was with Nell do well made the change. Everybody in this gambling crib they had, they let me, every last dude that was like around that had money, they was giving me money to gamble with because they respected the fact they, I had to be somebody if I was with him. Yeah, you know I mean, cause made the change. He just don't have anybody around him. He had me around him. Plus, you know, no homo, none of that. I was fly shit, pretty boy. So he knew I had to be somebody if I'm up there with him. So that first day I got a chance to know people, but then I was up there like that. Losing the Kool-Aid every day, chilling with the youngest and everything. And I was really up there holding it down, like really holding it down, man. We had the casino and all that. As y'all see Beanie Seagull on the dice and all that. So I'm up there holding it down. Then it was time for me to perform. And I, when I tell you that whole day, just imagine being around people all day and you a certain way around them and everything. And then when it got nighttime, and it's like for five straight days, I'm up there laying on this bum in the fucking, it was like a heat wave. I'm in the alley. A alley. It's like 100 degrees outside. I got all these clothes on. I'm sitting in an Indian position, Indian sitting position with all these bugs and shit around me waiting for five long hours for this young boy to call me and say, yo, he out there. For five days I did it. But one day I was in there for five hours and I got the phone call. Boom. So I, young boy come get me. You know where the boy was at? And I'm telling him, listen, man, now the boy like parked in the middle of the street. And I'm like, we had like the light, but we facing him. We spent the car around. So the whole time they thinking the boy in the house, but he in the car, he like double parked. He's in the car, but my young boy thought he was in the house. And this is how we found out he was in the car because somebody walked to the car and leaned over to talk to the boy. Right. So my young boy looked at me, he had his homie with him. That's, that's how I knew my young boy wasn't professional because he had his homie with him. Somebody I didn't even know. He's from Delaware, I think. I ain't know the young boy, but why would you bring him around or have him around you while we about to I'm about to perform? So it was really on sight. So it was whenever he saw, just call me. I looked at, he looked back at me to see I got the gun in my hand. So I don't know if he got a little nervous, but he didn't have no gas in the car. It was on E you know that light. Come on. He needed some gas. He got the, I don't, he got the air and got the windows rolled down. We need like a minivan. But I'm looking at this ball. I'm about to tear this ball to frame. So my young boy say, he ain't going nowhere. Let me go get some gas. Boot camp, yeah. But he said, let me go get some gas because the car going to cut off. I'm like, man, fuck this car cutting off. The ball right here, like he like probably at least 100 feet away from us. He ain't that far away from us, right? So what happened, the ball about to pull off. And when he pulled off, and make the, he made a, a right. So we had to make a left. We up on him. But mind you, my young boy ain't got no gas in the car, man. All boy had to do was pick up acceleration in the car. He was like, woof, he took off. He spent another block and we lost. I was mad as shit. So I said, go get some gas. He went and got some gas. And I was like saying to myself, young boy, fuck this up. Now, if I was, if he was anybody else, 
and I had no love and respect for him, both of them would have been eliminated for trying to blow this shit for a minute. This is just something, this, didn't, this ain't no just ordinary shit. This is something that was personal, and this was something somebody gave me some paper for. So anyway, I catch him. And when I catch him, we face to face. But this how I catch him. I'm out in that lot, boom, alley, whatever. And they say he was out there. So, I, boom, when I come out there, he came in the crib. Now, mind you, I got the joint on me, but it feel like it's falling. So when dude first see me, his eyes light up and he fumbling his gun. He had a gun on him, like a little 32, a little small little 32, a little revolver. And I seen it, he fumbling it, but he put it back in his pants, like in the front of his pants. So he like, I said, no, I ain't doing the, I'm up here just cleaning up. But he know that he ain't used to seeing me up there. And when he see me up there, something about to jump off. And dude was smart like that. So why the jaw about to fall, right? It's about to fall while he walking up on me, shake my hand. I'm really trying to rock this boy to sleep. So when the jaw about to fall, I had to lean against the door. Because the door, back door was open. So I leaned against the door. So the gun wouldn't fall. It was on my waist because I got to lean on the door and I got the trash back in my hand like I'm really cleaning the backyard and all that up, man. That's my... So this boy look over my shoulder and my head to see if anybody in the yard, but I ain't moving. If I move, it's going to fall. And I really got to get busy. If it fall, I'm going to perform, right? So he look over my shoulder, boom. He leave. And when he leave, I go in the basement, put the whole mask over my face, so like a whole... It was like a whole joint, like them joints, them young boys wear. I had the whole uh, part of it on my face, and a brother was in the basement doing something. I think he was growing marijuana or something. Something looking at him, boom, and I'm like, oh man, if you hear any noise in a few minutes, that's me. So don't be alarmed. So I'm telling him that. So I open the back the basement door, cause she ain't cooking. So I'm like, we at? I got the mask on. So it's gonna come from the basement. Open the door. She's looking right at me. I'm like, we at? She like, please, please don't do that in and from please don't do that. I got my, my my family, little sister, and all this old bullshit. She running past me, right? I'm like, just chill the fuck out, man. I got this. So now she's scared. She don't want it to happen in her crib and all that and all this old shit. So I leave out. And when I leave out, I'm back one another way. So I see this nigga. But I see him and a couple other people. I'm like, boom. This little girl rolled up on a bike. She had to be like five, six years old. Looked like she got her hair done. Baldies and all that shit, all that hair, right? So I thought about this movie I seen years ago where these little kids getting ice cream at the ice cream truck. And these white boys that start shooting the ice cream truck up. I mean, shooting at the people and little kids wind up getting killed. I don't know why the movie flashed in my head. It's something I seen in the movie before. So I'm like, damn, I got to drop on this boy, this little girl out here. I don't want this little girl to get hit or none of that shit. I'm thinking about the little girl. Park a car on the thing. Went and like, damn. So now I got the gun out. But I got like my hoodie tied around my waist. And I got a black bag like the size of this. I got a black bag like the size of this in front of me. But in back of me is the, is the, is the gun. But I got the bag like out in front of me. So ain't nobody really paying me no attention at all. Nobody. And I was like, damn, this shit was goofy. So next thing you know, I go across the street to get a better angle, man. And this young boy walked by me. I know he's like, what the fuck this boy doing in the dark? I'm like in the dark in the bushes. But I wanted to time it right. So when my man young boy walked over to the boy and hugged him, I had two options. Take both of them out right then and there. Or spare the young boy life and just wait till I got the opportunity to get this boy in the clear eyesight by itself. You know, so out of respect for his brothers and him, I ain't, I ain't tagging the boy like that, man. But anyway, what's crazy about that situation is somebody wound up getting hit in the head, right? And they didn't die because I think they got a plate in the head. So the boy was going to the hospital and as he's driving, the bullet fell out of his head. But he think that that was my work. It wasn't my work. First of all, when he got hit with, I, I didn't have that type of, yeah, I mean, situation in my hand. So the nigga he was around hit him 
And they was close range. That wasn't my work. You know what I'm saying? And if any if anything did hit you, ricocheted off something. Because you know what I mean? I already know how I move and how shit go. And he and you know, between us, this boy really thought, you know, I'd done something to him. He was felt some type of way about it. Because somebody was throwing that shit back. <laughs> niggas do niggas do some shit back. I'm ducking. And I'm walking real fast, like past these cars, so I can go over the tracks and jump in the shit I'm in. And then, you know what I mean? My folks you at? And I'm already at such and such. Yeah, how the fuck you get there that fast? I fucked up some, like a lot, like three good sweatsuits that I paid $200 for from going through this little gate hole and just leaning down on it. And it was snagging the left or the right back part of the sweatpants. Where your, where your butt be at, like a snag, like right there, like, and I'm like, damn. So, and the thing is, right, the girl, I can understand in her crib, she didn't want that shit all bloody with and all that, but I was in beast mode. That's when that was in beast mode. That's when I ran into the boy. I'm gonna show y'all. That's when I ran into what's his name? Um, the what's the boy name, y'all? Wallow and, and Gilly the Kid. When they was on fifth and ceased to be more, and they saw me, when they saw me, they was a little nervous and scared because the way I was looking, I gotta show y'all how I was looking, y'all. So y'all be like, y'all want y'all to think I was lying or nothing. I just want y'all to see the look I had in my face and what I had on. Cause I walked right up on both of them, man. I was like, ask Wallow, do he remember who I am? I was like, and I mentioned Fatty name. I said Hakeem and Mikey, the twins. He was like, oh man, get with me on Instagram. And I was like, what the fuck I'm gonna get you get with you on Instagram for, nigga? I, I'm right in front of you. Yeah, you know I mean, what the fuck I'm gonna get with you just to talk to you on there? We talking right now. But they were shook. That's when they was going through something with Tony the closer. When they backdoored him and slime balled him. You know? In a uh Scared to death, man. Every time I saw both of them, man. They were scared to death of me to change, man. Scared to death of it, man. And then Janazza, they had bodyguards with them. And I walked up on Wallow. I said, what's up with that Tony the Clothes situation? Let me handle that for you. Oh, oh no, no. I don't want no trouble, man. Leave that alone. Soft-ass niggas, man. You know, but, you know. See, my thing is, I ain't the type of dude that be worrying about I'm going to show y'all something, man. See, me, I'm a different type of animal, man. See, I have spirits around me all the time that y'all can't see. Only, like, CCT cameras and shit like that can see it. I'm going to show y'all I took a selfie and a real ghost behind me. Look. Look at this selfie. I'm in a Halloween store. I took a picture of the Black Lagoon. My flash went off my phone. And look what, see this girl behind me? Well, no little girl in at all in that Halloween store. They said ghosts come with mist. You know what I mean? See that mist? That fog? That shit real. That is not no make-believe shit. That's a real ghost behind me moving fast as shit with baldies in the hair. I took the, the picture, said three, two, one, and my whole screen went white. And when I seen the picture... This came out, and guess what they told me? The boy that worked at the Halloween store said, people always say that place haunted. Because this was the, the picture that I saw. You know, Creature of the Black Lagoon, I took a selfie with him. When I took a selfie with him, this one popped up in the selfie. I looked all around that store looking for a little girl. Wasn't a little girl in that, in that store at all. This look how little her head is. Look how fast she looks like she's moving. And look at that mist behind me. That's real mist. For the ghosts, man. Different, man. I'm different. You know, I'm different, man. Like, explain that. And I got a, a short video. I'm going to show y'all. Where ghosts keep going. Like, we're shooting up the uh, situation. Down my steps. I'm looking for something for y'all, right? I'm looking for them pictures, yeah, when I was looking for that boy, man, hunting this nigga down, man, and I ran a while on Gilly, and Wallow going to say, hit me up on Instagram. I fucked this sweatsuit up. See this sweatsuit right in his Nike, John? 
I fucked this joint up in the pants a little bit. I had that on too, hunting for this nigga, man. That's when I had the forces. The black ones in um, the pool. That's my backyard. The black ones in them ones, all the shirts. Niggas be bullshit, not me. But I hope I can show y'all. That's all Eddie Bauer. I'm looking for that picture so I can show y'all when, you know what I mean, when, when, what's his name? See them Ray-Bans? Every time I buy a pair of Ray-Bans for $300, I wind up losing them. It's crazy, right? I'm in a hotel. That's the Hard Rock Atlantic. See, I lost a lot of fucking money going to that hotel. I shouldn't have got talked into going to this hotel, man. The Hard Rock took my fucking money. I still have fun with the kids, though. That's my backyard. You know, that shit cooking back. You feel me? Those niggas be... These are the best joints. You see Mars Advanced joints? What? Look that up. Get down. They don't cost that much money either. That's me in the act hour down north. These joints right here, man. Especially if you trying to get busy with a female. <laughs> Backyard furniture, hockey ball, Ray Bands. Somebody got this. Is Danny Jones I had on. So the pitch is about to come up, y'all. Well, I ran into the boy at uh, Atlantic City. I love this picture right here when I'm in Atlantic City with the veterans. I had that night, I had that Dita shit on. Look, I had that Dita shit on, I had the Dita shit on, right? Look at my Dita's I had on. Remember them Adidas? Who remember these Adidas? They they like powdered blue. I'm a fly motherfucker OG and Nautica shirt, Nautica sneakers. Oh, for real. It's around this time. See the Gucci's? My Malcolm X tip. Grandma, may she rest in peace. Richard Island, 100 years old. Grandma. Grandma Divine. Father's Day, my Father's Day cake. This is when, this is the picture right here. Here it go right here, y'all. This is when I was hunting for that nigga. And that shit jumped off when I ran the wild on them. You see what I'm driving, though, right? I'm driving the Beamer, though. The truck, and they said they can help me. Look, I was on my mission, look for that nigga, the earphones and everything. Then I switched up and got the big ass Pathfinder. Gray John, smoked out. Then everybody know I got the car, man. Niggas wanna know you driving? You know what I mean? I got bleach on my hat. My Nike joint. When niggas was just uh, looting, I bought one of these hats on somebody when they were looting. Got that Nike shit on. Nike shorts, Nike shirt. Hunting. Nigga called me a bum. This before YouTube. You know what I mean? Hockey taking contracts, dropping folks off at the airport. Out West Philly. At the lab. West Philly, that's West Philly. 56th Street. 56 in Gerard, lands down. If you know, you know. Look at me, man. Do I look fucked up to y'all? Yeah, I mean, hunt niggas look Jurassic Park, I mean. Baby girl, my daughter. My cat, man. We sold crabs, seafood. Yeah, you know I mean, see niggas see them trade. We put them in them. We sold chocolate, strawberries, chocolate pretzels. Look at my jaw, salmon, potatoes, and all that. See the price? I ain't got a lot of y'all. That's how we put it up. Two dollar 
two dollars a piece, six for twelve, twenty for thirty-five, muscle shrimps, a dozen for uh, five a bag, ten. all that we were selling, man. That's what I try to tell you. I didn't see them big ass pot that she cooking in my kitchen. Yeah, you know I mean them things wrapped up, and this we had a lot of these anyway, so we have cookouts. People could take food on with them. Y'all see me? Hockey best ever did it. Niggas can talk that shit all they want. I'm the jack of all trades for real. Water, ice, seafood, everything, man. I ain't got to sell drugs. That was, you know, when I tried to show motherfuckers, they could do other shit. And I made a lot of money doing this. Look at my eagles, you know what I mean? Got the eagle jacket, the mug, everything, the cup, all that, man. Championship, nigga, man. Pitbull. That spoon pitbull from, from 25th of Master. He and McCray. Special Ed. See how he's buying them shrimps? They come from Frankfurt. All the way down north, fully buying this shit, man. Boy, gonna try to tell me I'm a bum, nigga, and I'm a jack of all trade. Nigga, look how he's eating in cookouts, nigga. This ain't no welfare money, nigga. It's hockey raw. Them, all these cost $40 a piece, nigga. And I got all the backyard furniture, man. You got the game fucked up. My turtles, they was living good before I gave them away to my niece. Had two turtles. They grew up to be big as shit. They cost money. Tank cost money. Oh, man, you see that big ass tank? You see the shit that came in? Look. That's the filter thing. It might have been the whole thing. Big ass tank cost a hundred and something dollars. Shrimps, salmon, rice, and broccoli, my special. All the nutrients and sea moss you need. Boy, do I hate it. See me? That's me. In front of my brownstone and my son. Not my mom crib. Like that nigga thought. I was giving out free lunches to the kid. Me and my cat. Man, look at my cat laying on my lap, man. For a cat to be this big to lay on you, they got to really love you. My boy cat, we had to put him down in front of him. That's my crib, man. 65 inch and all that. Come on, man. See, that shit say family right there. Look at me, man, chilling at my crib. My cat loved me to death. And I didn't even know my cat was sick when she was laying on me. They paid a lot of money for our operation, a lot of money. You know? The kitchen. TV, deep freezer full of food. Rest in peace, little cousin. I took all these socks and made masses out of them. You know what I mean? That's how I'm used to eating, man. I don't know how I... See, look, the mask, look. But they don't hear me, though. This in front of my house. When the tree fell down, nigga, to my little my mom, yeah, this is looking down at it from up my my, my window. One thing about it, my my one of my Dita collections, y'all already know I got these the throw throwbacks. Y'all know I got the Yeezys though, but these are my favorite sneaks right here. They just zip up. No shoestrings. They had the all black ones, but this boy, he got them before me. I was sick about that. The all black ones like these? But these, they great, though. These are my favorite for, like, slippers. They my favorite joints. I don't put no socks on. Throw these on, zip them up. This one, I was up Southwest doing my thing, man. If you know, you know. If you came to the casino, one boy got paid 50000 The blackjack table. We wasn't playing, man. Look at that. Y'all see me? It's in the basement, nigga. This is what we do in basements, nigga. We paint the whole walls red. That thing was nice. They was coming off spinning that bread. Yeah, Beanie Siegel came down. Y'all seen the video. Look at the rollie. Look at the rollie. 
Hockey water rolling on them niggas. Yeah. Who remember them days coming down southwest with us? That base was big as shit, though. The southwest base. Shall I hear my face? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You see the beamer. Putting gas in the beamer with the beamer, just a rainbow. Polo hat, Nike hoodie. I miss them Jones. But it's baby girl Jones. They ain't my joints. You know? Hold up. Come on now. Hold up, y'all. I got to uh, change my music real fast, man. I might want to show them. Let me listen to some. I got to listen to some of that nigga there. I fuck with that music. Man. Look at that. This is some job. What do you think you do? See? Selling all that shit, y'all. Get money, man. They're gonna tell me. You sell me the hat, I sell all type of shit, nigga. Yeah. Anything I put my mind to. Look at the strawberries, man. You know? Creativity, man. Look, we selling them too. Fruit baskets with fruit in it. He don't like that shit. They came to my birthday party, J Street niggas. That's Lump Lump. You know, he got, you know, disabled, but that's still our homie, man. And he brought his home. He said, you can play a, bring a plus one when I turn 47. I don't follow none of my homies. I don't give a fuck they got an element or not. Man, Mikey, look at me. Look at that shit on. That Adidas shit on. You know, I was just buying shit to buy it. Look at that. Look how big my back is, though. Damn. Strong back, man. Niggas ain't got no back like that. Niggas, little ass niggas out here. You know, look, look at them boys. Man, that's a whole plate right there. It's a plate. And you know I got to show you my young boy, though. Where are we at? Yeah, they got that whole magazine. Paid twenty dollars for that Seven Eleven. The whole season. Yup. Got that trophy. Y'all see it? See that picture right here? Look. Me and my kids, my family, my mom, my woman, my daughter head out of her back. She's fourteen now, though. She thirty in her thirties, early thirties. Nine out of 17 now. Sent me 11. Going on 11. They're pulling up, up young 30s. Hakeem. Look at this, man. My daughter did that. My daughter pulled show her up with the green eyes. She put that thing together, man. Hakeem. Baby. Look, look, look at my Kobe Bryant, John. Look at Kobe. Got them Kobe's up there. They worth a lot of money, man. Jordans, Bo Jacksons, Air Maxes, Air Maxes, Air Maxes, Polo Level Shoe Boots, Fila, Fila, Roly, Nike, Camouflage Hoodie. And that's just probably 15 pair. What? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Like, what? Six, 15 pair of sneakers on the outside of my door and 50 pair in the closet. Oh, it's not no YouTube shit either, by the way, though. You know. Look at these Kobe's. Oh, look at me at the Eagles game. And that's me right there on the sideline. And Westbrook run out of bounds. About to give me the ball. At the Eagles game. Eagles beat them, blew them the fuck out one night. Sunday night game. My brother Daryl grandson and my two brother Mikey grandson. They came to see me at my water ice business, man. Coalition. Nike sweatpants. Air Max. I mean, uh, ACG, ACG boots. Nike joints. Rolly on. Making 500 a day in the water ice business. Like I'm a drug dealer. Yeah, the whole city came there. The whole city. They showed me love. That's what you do, man. You bring the little ones around you. You 
feel me? Go to me, yeah, the store. You ain't a fucking store like me, nigga. You ain't looking like this, nigga, North. Like, he took my shit back a little bit, though. But, you know, of course I stay winning. North and want no fully business. Hold up. Look at that, boy. Nigga glowing. They ain't ready for me, man. That's why they want to see me on top of the world. Deep fried Oreos, I mean. Deep fried Oreos. Put the, you know what I mean? That pancake, whatever that type of dough on it, over top of the Oreos and put them in a the deep fryer. Them joints turning and shit look like donuts. Went up Frankfurt to see my homies, my cousin CJ, my folks, and my football team, Boo. And Boo finally related to me. That's hard in junior high school, Frankfurt. We won the water I struck up there on Frankfurt Day. Had the Feli Sweatsuit on, the Feli on. Had the Rooley on, got around all everybody from Frankfurt. They teamed. Hock up the hock at Frankfurt Day. Everybody came up there to see me. You see me, man. I love me in Frankfurt, man. Anywhere I go, this is the love I get in my city. Made it small, $200. Look around, Ronald Fletcher. See them smiles, man. Came up there with the water ice truck. Anybody's happy to see me. You see, hold up. You see the half right there, that fila. <laughs> I ain't bragging. I'm just letting y'all let y'all know how my life is, man. My daughter all happy. This one we made the pizza pretzels. Open the pretzel up, put three different cheeses on it, put the beef pepperonis on it, six of them. Put in the microwave. That's four dollars right there. Deep fried Oreos, two scoops of ice cream with the chocolate on it, and the sprinkles. That's how the what ice business, man. Told you, man. Funnel cake. You know what I mean? I did it all, man. So Dennis, look. Those princes. Free bears on. That was a major change, man. Free major change, man. Of course, y'all see me. Football, all American. I'm like the shortest little one on the team. Heart bigger than anybody on the team. And my man Kwan, he wanted to be in the principal. Kwan. I was going with his Mike was going with his sister. I was going with a girl from the middle. Man, that shit, man. Before you two. Before you two. So if this was even for YouTube, like, how was I bum? I mean, like, in front of the range I was driving. Made the chain, let me drive the range over so you know I was, you know what I mean? Look at him, look at him, look at him. Roll his weapon, his band on. His band on, Nautica, flies Nautica shirt. But for YouTube. So how can they save the ball looking like this before YouTube? You know? And I'm not bragging with that nigga. No, like, nigga, nigga I'm a, my daughter always has the most expensive Halloween costume. That's what she, you know, you know, one of my meals. The other Nautica, powder blue Nautica, like the aqua color. Trenches, man. <laughs> Boy, thorough, man. Look at it, man. Rolly on, feet lot hoodie, Ray Bears, just chilling. My little cousin, that's my brother, Daryl Cartoon, that he made up. 
got his own cartoon thing going on. Me and my cousin from Mindless Behavior, Prodigy, the R&B singer, Lee singer, my little cousin. Look, his mom is my first cousin. His mother and my mother are sisters. Look at me. I won't even know YouTube yet. Captain America shirt, Ray Bans on, sitting on the step in front of my brownstone, chilling. Son graduated from my high school. Graduation, my big ass cat. Two rows. I got this for my birthday with the black Air Max. Baby, baby, that's your life, it's your life, it's your life. Just before I got on YouTube, man. See this brother right here? Brother Ben X. This made the change. This be McFly. Uh, this sister, I forgot her name. This Empress. I forgot who this Muslim brother is. This Ty Kui just came on. It's both from the Eagles. He did it 28 years, but he worked for Krasner, right? But they had this event. And, and Duel, the one of the feds grad, brought them to the city. In Texas. He was at the event and everything. I just want to show you all that. Ooh, no gray, no nothing. I'm in my 40s. This. I'm in a good shit, man. Wait, man, if I, I'm a different breed, man. Good hair, chinky eyes, no home office. Look, 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 look at the boy right here. Y'all see me? The members only jacket on? Look, members only. Members only. You know what I'm saying? See it right here, look. Members only. Throwback shit, man. And I'm wolfing. In my bathroom before. This one I was Instagramming it. Yeah. Fully trenches, fully trenches. Well, you know, I just wanted to show. Well, let me turn this joint back around. I might have got a little carried away, y'all, with the pictures, but, you know, I got a little carried away showing y'all the pictures, but, you know, went down, you know, then I ain't this, I ain't what I wanted to just do, but I got a little carried away. This is one of my favorite coats right here. It's a $250 coat. It's a, a Tommy Hill coat. It's one of my favorite coats because it kept me warm a lot. It's Tommy Hill drink. All black. One of my favorite coats, man. Of course, I got all the coats, y'all know, but wintertime is when I really get busy. Throwing it. These sneaks right here is the sneaks I wore with the Rolex. The black ones. These ones right here. These Air Max. Crazy, ain't they? The Air Max sign right there. With the Roly. I tell you, man, I had fun, man, you know. And this one, I had the birthday. I had the Air Maxes on, the Nike, just do a sweatsuit with the Nike, with the big zipper. No, just, what's, these might have been David Nike sweatpants, the whole sweatsuit look. I think it was 47 on this picture. No Beijing, no nothing. And you know what's crazy? Like, soon I posted these pictures, my baby mom started hating on me. I got the Doshi Gabbana's on. All gold frame Doshi Gabbana sunglasses, right? So my man Frog owed me some money. So he gave me them glasses. And then one day he gonna come over with some old. It was like, 
months after they had the glasses, but I would never wear them. And then he was like, man, let me hold the glasses, man. Let me hold them. And I gave him a do shake of bombers, man. And I never seen him again. Or the black roly. He got locked up with the black roly, though. But I gave it a watch to my cousin, Wayne. And Wayne let Frog hold it, and Frog got locked up with it. But he didn't intentionally try to keep the watch. He really got locked up with it. We used to give every day. And you know me, I'm making so much money, I really don't give a fuck too much about materialistic shit because I sport it for a minute, and then I give it away. Look at that, man. Look at that boy, Hockey Raw, man. This is why they jealous of me, man. Because I look so good, no homo. Because I'm Hockey bro. when them joints came out. They had a thousand of these hats. My daughter, my mom, Mr. Sign autograph bass, base football from one of the Eagles. This joint right here is big as shit. This banner, got that in my basement. But this is a 55-inch TV behind me. This banner I got right here was on flight night when, when they was retiring Brian Dawkins' jersey. They gave this whole row these, right? But we were not in that row. So we ran over to that row and got one because it was half empty. Me, my sister, my baby mom. And the thing is, when we went there that night, my baby mom was in labor. And I didn't even know it. Mom Dukes. My mama, Queen B, all this shit, bro. There ain't nobody fucking with this. Them ugly Christmas sweaters, I got an ugly eagle joint. That going crazy. You know them little mini games I got? You can get it, piggy bank. In your feelings, eagle pillow. It's in my bathroom. My bathroom, biggest shit. Hold on, see my name? In my room, y'all. Refrigerator right there. Mr. and Mrs. right there. Then it's a mama bump, nigga. I thought I lived like a king. Look how fat my face is, man. My hair, my feet. I let that shit grow like Paul Bunyan if I want to, my face. See, I've gained too much. What, I got on, what kind of sweatpants I got on? Polo? You that fly hockey? They ain't no me like that, I know. That's when I was eagle crazy. They got their ass with <laughs> the cowboys. Mocha Smiley on the Black Mafia. And then they just eat. I can my uncle Smiley, like Mafia with that. Look at this, look at this jacket. My, I mean, my coat my uncle Smiley got on. Damn. Fur, leather, John. All right, so I gave y'all, I ain't really, I gave y'all a little something, something, something. Let my daughter spoil her little bit of bread. Rest in peace, Big Sherm. You know, that's the one skinny me locked up for. You know, cousin of Nass is from DOD, rest in peace. Rest in peace, Sam. Say cool. It's me in the club. It's my cousin Kenyatta. His dad, his dad Lionzo Robinson. And big Lionzo was in, the, in jail. Kenyatta was real good with my niece. He did 40 years, they just let him come on. That's his father. And Jamal, little Molly the kid from DOD rap group, he locked up doing life. That's me back in the day, 91, when I was 18. That's the Eagles. Frank. That's Lord Doe from the from the mansion. Lord Doe again. See all the Philly rap, I'm cool with all of them. Sexy shit. I live and throwback. I wore that jersey that one time I gave it to the young man. He came off the place when I gave it to him. Brand new. These some fly ass felines right here. Them joints crazy, ain't they? You could just put them on, right? 
is like a sock. That part right there. Look at them crispy things, man. I ain't and I bought it with the sweatsuit. It's almost crazy, ain't they? Look at this, man. You got sweatsuit? What sweatsuit? How you gonna fuck them up hot? You know what I was driving when I had this trusted on? It's the time my cousin Kenyatta passed away. Um, I don't know. I think Major Chains even was locked up or out of town. And this man from Bucks County, one of them counties, while he in the feds now, we switched cars. And he gave him his car. It was a, a Volvo. All white Volvo. This new this joint was crazy. I'm flying all through North with a white Volvo, butter leather seats. Got the Fila shit on. Crispy shit. Crispy. Look at they fly like me and my niece. I was down North Philly. I see them walls. Y'all know how this is this house right here. This rich white lady lived in there and sold it to my niece. And she moved right up in that joint. That's the vestibule door behind her. Like, you open that door, there's another door you gotta walk through to get out. Look at that boy, hockey. Look at hockey, man. Hold up, what's next? Me, that Jordan shit on. Fila. Jordan. It look like my hair. It don't look like I'm bald headed, like right here though. But I'm not. I mean, I bought these for one seventy. The young boys was talking about, yo, oh, oh, gee, they the wrong joints. You don't supposed to get them. I said these joints cost one seventy. I bought a pair like this. They was all black, purple, and aqua blue. Them joints crazy. Y'all seen them? Damn, one of them video. Look at me, man. Look at me, man. My late 40s looking like that. They them sleep right there. Pat Lever. I wind up giving them away, though. Kenyatta and his daughter. Recipes Kenyatta. DOD Recipes Kids. Thurl Kenyatta. DOD. My uncle. How we get all the way right there? Damn. Oh, this Kenyatta when he was little. In the 70s. Late 70s. And my cousin Nene, this TT and Lou Mom. That's it, the Pasashi glasses on graduating like in 94, 95. Damn, man. So many people came to his friend room, man. This Janaz, I mean. That big yacht. Giant, man. Me and my dukes. I got my hair grow my face. My hair can really grow, like grow. Bro. You know what I mean? I let that shit grow. No nappy shit, man. You know what kind of ski jacket that is, y'all? That's a Michael Kors, John. That's a Michael Kors first came out. My daughter, nah, nah, new, new. She got my twin brother whole face. Baby, we were 17, man, look at new, new, and Janet Dukes. You know, I take them everywhere. You see, she got them things on her feet. That's when she was going to Belmont Chartered Academic School. She was getting an A in Chinese and everything. You know, I take them everywhere together. Chuck E. Cheese, Dave & Buster's, the movie, shopping. That's what I do when I get money. I waste it on them. Let them just play games and go out and all that. That's my life and sister. Having the little ones with me. Even great. Ralph Lauren Polo sweatpants. Nikes on the match the Eagles. North Face jacket. Championship Eagles. And I took this picture. And y'all see what I'm doing in the middle of this shit. Yeah, you know I mean, champs, nigga. We selling these shirts. She got the shirt in my hand. 
Man, I had all the shirts, hoodie hats. Man, I had to say all these hats. What? Watch how many hats I show y'all. That, that's a hoodie. Championship hoodie. Look at all this shit, man. We ain't playing no fucking games, man. Like, we weren't playing no games. Look at them hats, man. Are you kidding me? Man, we really did big. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> What? Man, listen, man. That was so many people out there was like not rich. Like my people, poor black people. Man, I was giving them damn and giving these shirts away. You know what I mean? $20 shirts, I was selling for $7, $8. It was, it was kids and women that ain't had no money, so I couldn't charge them up. I ain't, I ain't slimy like that. See, I got a heart, man. But then I got that 45 that four and that five, the birthday cake. Watch this, y'all. That was on the cake. Yeah, I mean, he was. Watch this. Why do I keep doing it, man? Oh, here we go. All right. This one had with that gut. That's when I was just tripping, eating a lot of junk food, not getting no rest. Just blowing up like a doughboy. The Puma sweatpants. The cake, the four and the five. But I'm going to show you all the rings. See the rings? That's a ring. That's a ring. And I was giving the rings out to people. It was like the next day, I think, with the Super Bowl. We celebrated either that Super Bowl night or the day before the Super Bowl. But as you see... We gotta get a four and a five. Fly, Eagles fly. Happy birthday, Hakeem and Mike. And the football field. And we won. We won a Super Bowl. And we have a Super Bowl party anyway because my birthday. You see the ring right there? That's one ring. Another ring. Another ring. My bro Mikey name. Man. See, we do it every thing about we did. Even though we have, like, more than one set of twins in my family, but we didn't have twins in our family for over 40 years. So my cousin Tracy, she got two grand, she got a lot of grandkids, but two of them is twin girls. And then my brother Reg, my dad with his son, he got twin boys. And they birthday February the 1st, and I was birthday February the 5th. And they way younger than us, so we celebrated the just being like the only twin of our family for a long time. So that's the championship jacket the Eagles had on at the Super Bowl. And of course, my brother had them. They cost $225, 225 250 And he was getting rid of them for $125. Yeah. So that was like one of my birthday gifts right here the jacket. Yeah, I mean. Baby, you know what I'm saying? Love is love, man. Yeah, people that love you. See that on my feet, though? The Nikes right there, that's 210. Two I fucked them up when I came in the store. You looking like that, like after they won and everything. They're like, damn, you know, I had to go in there and get me some 30s. <laughs> Yo. The team, when I went down north and got me some trails to celebrate them Eagles. You got that shit on, man. They tell me oh, I'm a bum. This before the internet. So how was I bum though? Like wearing shit like that, throwback shit. You know, fly who fly type shit. But that's what they say. They want to see you fail, cause they want to talk about you. Cause they think you you, you ain't nobody important. Yeah, you know I mean, if you really show them how fat your cheeks is, cause you was eating for real. Not some motherfuckers you see the pictures. Before they become famous and all that and make money, they look skin and bones. But look at me, man. I'm trying to lose. But look at that. I'm damn at 200 pounds on this picture. Eating good, living good, feeling good. Not realizing I'm bigger than a dough boy. It's one of my favorite shirts. Hold up. That's one of my favorite shirts right there. This shirt right here. Me and my daughter made... She was little, much younger. We made snowman. 
a little snowman. My mom, we made snowmen. My nephew, when I had the Cherokee, 2015. Me, my oldest daughter, her birthday was the 26th of March. My niece, my cousin Eric, free Eric. My niece, they all sisters, these three right here, my brother Bean's kids, my brother Daryl. I forget one of the parties, we always go to each other's parties, so the party was up her house, Dee Dee. My niece, her sisters, so you know. I know that some of my stay with that polo shit on. The long sleeve polo joints. I'm gonna fly a little OG on the low, though, on the low. I'm fly, then a fly. Oh, man, it's my granddaughter and her baby brother. Yeah. My grandbaby. That's my, I, she my oldest grandbaby. My daughter, yeah. Her baby brother. This Mikey grandson. Mikey grandson right here. Yup. Nasir. His name is him and my, my my son got the same name. And his baby brother named it to me, Hakeem. Me and my son in the truck. Brandy. With them hazel eyes. Hands, boy, yeah. He play football now though. Eagles. See what I'm saying? This is how it looks on Thanksgiving or one of my parties or something like that. And some of this is food and some of it is pies and cakes and what's that? Egg salad or seafood salad? They gotta be seafood salad, something like that. But as you see, we don't bullshit around, man. Like, and this is how it goes down in my crib. There's no bullshit, man. As you see, the deep freezer wasn't there yet. The waters was, though. Turkey must have been Thanksgiving. All right, TV up top. Playing around with that gut. Polo hoodie on the side, Walmart. Because I stayed in Walmart shopping. Damn, boy, that ain't good. that's for driving and eating good. You know, going to buffet every few days. What store is this? I don't think it's the one in Southwest. My cousin Tony. Remember. See, they keep showing this picture, right? But he was in Vietnam. Look at me. Damn. My shit was spinning. I see why they was jealous of me out here on the trenches. Hold up, where that picture at? Look, I'm sweat. Fuck, I got this going. Cut, though, ain't it? Remember that dumbass fight I ran? I ran into this fight, man. Everybody always come to my house. You having a, you having a party? Every time I rent the fights, right, people ask me, like, this is my daughter at the school. Because I'm always renting a fight, not knowing it's a big thing. Spending a hundred dollars renting a fight, have food and everything, alcohol and all that. All right. See right here? Matter of fact, I'm gonna show y'all something. Hold up, we'll go back to that. We went to the Bad Boy concert, right? The Bad Boy concert when Puff Daddy came at 20th anniversary. Who got this game right here? I had this game. It cost $20 in right aid. I forgot who I gave it to. But I played it a lot of times. This is a 1980 game. It came out when I was in first grade. And I always wanted this game. Games like this used to keep me in the fucking house. Who remember this? Remember when Jones came out in the 70s? Oh, I'm about to show y'all when I was at Poundside Pop and the rappers from Philadelphia when, when Bamboo was popping. Look, it's me, that's Poundside Pop, Zai Duel, and me. But he got the, Zai got the sign up. Just something like this. He got his hand up like this, but this is me right here. Boom. And this is, a, this is another picture of us together. Because he got that shirt on. We was in Bamboo. And that's me and Rico Havoc. In the same spot. 
The rapper Rico Havoc from Southwest Philly, Rico Havoc from Southwest Philly. They always there. Me and Rico Havoc. Pound side pop. Zai do well and me. And Fat G's was there. We took a lot of pictures. This is right near the casino. Unless that's me throwing it up. Hold up, who's the phone hand is that? That my hand? That might be my hand. I don't know if that might be Zao. Unless, I ain't really sure. What I got on? I don't know what the fuck I got on, but I got something on. Me and Rico have it. We in Bamboo. Rico have the rapper. Got that polo shit on. Damn, look at that boy here, though, y'all. My shit different. See, my waves go down like that, but my other waves go that way, straight. Different, man. Got that low shit on, too. Look at that low. Every polo shirt that this color is color blue always got this light blue hair. I don't even notice that. You gotta wear polo to know that. My sneakers, I had sneakers this color with that, with that horse and some shorts. You know, look at me, let the hair grow. No Beijing, y'all. No Beijing. No shoe polish like them niggas be wearing shoe polish. Them niggas be wearing that shooey, 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 dooey, do. Shooey dooey doo. Oh, that's when I was selling these red bottoms. I sold them for five hundred. My people's only wanted three fifty for them, but a girl I used to deal with bought them. She drove up in the a Benz and bought them all. Poo poo sister Lisa, cause Lisa married to my brother, and she was like, "You want to make a couple of dollars? Get rid of these for me." So I sold them and just told her to keep the money. I didn't even want to break down. So when she bought up, she bought up in the Benz and came and cashed me straight out. I said, that's one of that. But she thought she was my old girlfriend, but no. I used to go with her sister. When I went to Gideon, Mikey went with her. Rashid and Saida. She, yep, she bought these red bottoms. Had them online. Sold them, too. Think about it. I sold these online on Facebook. 500, no bullshit. Straight cash bought them. Cash. Roses. Over smiling in the bells of Louisburg in the 60s. My Maxine from South Philly. You know what I mean? Yeah, from North Philly. Got a South Philly. This is what it felt, man. You know, over the feds with, what's the boy name? John Gotti and them in, in Louisburg. Different, man. You know what I'm saying? Look at this. Oh, hold on, hold on. I'm going to show you a minute. Smiley, man. Frederick Armour. This got to be a thumbnail one day. Look at my uncle with the schoolboys on. Schoolboy glasses. And it's good in the feds. Getting visits and everything, man. You ain't getting no visits in the feds, man. <laughs> These LeBron James cost $350 or $365. Air bubble going all the way around. I gave these to my brother Daryl. Peach. Peach LeBron's with the air bubble going all the way around. I wore, I wore with the peach shirt. Let me show you what shirt I wore with these. I wore that shirt with it. Whoo, fuck them up, didn't I? I know y'all hating. Not anybody hating on me, though. But these peach drinks here, 350. Come on, man. Did I represent LeBron with these things, though? I was tanned up like that. Hockey was eating. What I was doing, I do. I looked like I was not. I was scrambling out here before YouTube. No, I was getting money before the tube, waved up before the. Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. That good shit, nigga. Look at me in the Cherokee, 2015, all gray, fifty thousand dollar car, man. Making my rounds, man. Making my rounds, man. You can tell me I ain't a low life. Nigga, I'm polo low life for real, nigga. That ball right there, man. In the world looking like money. You see my daughter at his school drop off some clothes and some money. I was in 
I was in the hospital or something, somewhere, looking like a million trillions. Oh, this is my birthday. Two 1800s, Amsterdam, Amsterdam, Ciroc, some more shit. Box of wine, more shit. More wine, I have more shit than this stuff. Y'all know my birthday had turned up. My mom, my daughter. Yeah, see, more shit. Look at that right there. Y'all know that shit costs paper. Y'all know that shit is like really costs money. Like, that shit ain't cheap. Oh, I got the sweat on. <laughs> Damn, boy. That's, ca that's cashmere, though. That's a cashmere sweater. Born on Samson Street. That's a gift. Cashmere, man. That's good shit. Man, baby girl came to see her. This was when she got the honor roll breakfast. And I went up there and ate the honor roll breakfast with my daughter at the honor roll. Nunu at the buffet. Honor roll. Yeah. <laughs> I beat Daddy Dukes. Waved up. Michael waved up. What's behind me? Y'all see that paper? Y'all thought I was bullshit. That's that's a, that's some bread right there, man. And I ain't even know I took the picture showing you my waves and that paper right there. God damn, Hagi. That's in my kitchen though. I ain't know I showed y'all that paper. You know, I make so much money out here, man. Look at that goddamn. Look how my waves go that way and come down that way. I told you I train my hair different. I'm different from these dudes. Many dudes wasn't winning like that. Oh, that's one, you know, even though I'm Muslim, you know. But I ain't going to take the holiday away from my kids. Man, if they want to have, have a day away. You know what I'm saying? I mean, boy, happy, man. Beard and all, no gray. Hey, Gully TV. What the heck? Ain't no gray on it, baby. Ain't no gray. Ain't no gray, goddammit. My nephew, when he was at the laundry mat with me. I they keep doing every time I do that, she keep bullshitting with me. Y'all, let me just bullshit. Hold up. Who is this shit? This is a lawyer. FC Curry back. He gave me his card. Left me in the barbershop. I just got that shit rounded off to the nearest decimal. Damn, boy. You know, I'm always be putting lip gloss on their lips and all that. My shit just shine, no homo. My shit, I'm just, my skin just glossing in. You know what I mean? Before you two, man, well, let me tell you what year was this. Seven years ago, y'all. Nice cut. God, they loving me, man. God, they loving the kid. Damn, I got it lusting off the boy, he handsome and all that, man. Like, it's crazy, man. I'm really, I'm really him, though. Look at that goddamn cut, though, man. Like, come on, man. I went on YouTube. Oh, man. Ain't no motherfucking Beijing in my face. I'm really him. This is before this. My daughter went to the, the soul circus, the, you know. Take them everywhere, you know. I take the kids everywhere, man. This man had a little debate on mine. Who y'all like? Log on and answer, mama. Look how many comments I got. Seven years ago, I got so many comments on here, man. Right? But that's a lot. 155 comments debating on which syrup is the best. Oh, that's when I scared the shit. I know y'all just got scared. Of I was riding around one Halloween with this on. They were scared to death. Kids was running from me. Seven years ago, yo, I was riding around. I came to the door. The young boy ran when he seen me shit. I'm riding around in one of my rentals, right? I'm like in the 24th and Somerset all around that way. Soon the young boys, young kids see me. They hauled ass. Damn, you can't even see my, I can see my eyes, bro. I don't know why y'all can't see him on here, but I can see my eyes on here, but you really can't see him on here, though. You can see him right here, though. Damn. I used to throw this on sometime. I went hunting. That's my homie Twine, man. No homo. Twine was like a fitness trainer, man. 
He was a low life member, man. Look at my homie. I was drunk and shit on this picture, man. My homie Twine, man. He gone, bro. Thorough. He in the Ram Squad video, like a little movie they made. He the husky boy sitting on the steps. He got shot up, though. You, cause Tommy let him hold his burger, his, his platinum jack, and when Grand Squad and Blumberg was going to war, they thought he was Tommy and them. They shot him up, hit him in his knee. But the dudes who had something to do with it, they apologized to Twine because they knew Twine was really cool with both sides. He just said he was using his car. Now you see these rich white friends he got. These rich white people living in the suburbs used to give him tickets to the game. And that's how when I seen that picture with Deshaun Jackson, I was with Twine. I was with Twine. Like, they ain't going to, like, say he's a rich guy. He got $150,000, $150,000 bins. He let Twine hold it. Twine will come pick me up. We'll go out. Or if they got tickets to the Sixers game, the Eagles game, real close tickets. Up close, they won't want to go. They give them to Twine and man, Twine will go. And sometimes we just pay for it, but we had some good seats. The Twine, man. Twine's born January 17, 1972. Passed away October 15, 2015. He was no bullshit. He was older than me and my brother and everybody with us. We thought we were the oldest. But Twine, he had us by a whole year, man. Yup. Twine and Larry, man. He played the, um, to Yachty. Yeah, Yak, Yak is um is Arab and his brother. That's the old head. Yak got that polo shit on. My son, Norny, my brother, Daryl, my cousin, Wayne. I was having my my party when I was about to turn. Well, going to do some county time. But I had a party before I did all that. Everybody showed up. My family from Frankfurt. I'm talking about everybody showed up to this party, man. They had like 60 people. That's my cousins and them. When they was little, they next door to us, man. My family. I'm bar past me. May she rest in peace. They came at the door. Yup. We had a ball, man. And we had parties. I'm talking about we had parties, man. That shit don't be over till the next day, damn it. And I wanted to clean up anything. It's the bowling alley. I'm sweating. Probably got my high beams on because I probably had some perks in me. Took baby girl out, pizza, all she can eat type shit. You know what I mean? See all that lemonade. Yeah, we went out, had a ball. Eagles. Yeah, that's how I eat, man. That's how I eat big, man. I just had to slow down. This one bad. This had all the bad boy shirts. My brother Daryl had all these shirts. You know what's crazy? I wish I would have... I do got some of them shirts somewhere, but I wish I would have saved some that, that nobody wear because my brother going route, and he sell a lot of shirts. He sell a lot of shirts at World Series, big events, Super Bowls and all that, and he was at the 20th anniversary outside when I was inside. And I bought all these shirts when I came out. Like, no matter what show he do, I buy all the shirts and I wind up giving them away to people I know. People, wives, people, baby moms, people, girlfriends, people, nieces, grandmoms. You know, people love to wear these type of shirts. Like, they went to the show or something. Janet Jackson shirts and all that. We went to this tour, 2016. Yup, look what I had on. Polo shirts, polo shorts. And I had the feel. What I had, I had the feel She had that motherfucking, you know, that bag and all that little good shit. We had a ball though, man. Like, I remember, look, we was going in, right? You know, we was, I don't know we was holding hands or not, right? But it was the feel I had on. Had the high top, all white feel on. Yeah, you know I mean, the polo shorts, the polo shirt. You know what I mean? I Getting money. Them felines are soft as a motherfucker, too. In a rug. In a rug. Look, look at me. Look at me, man. Like, it's getting money 2016. You know what I'm saying? I could talk about 2016 because 2016 was eight years ago. 
husky I was, man. I was eating for real, making thousands every day. Had all the sneaks, had everything, man. So the ladies, this girl see me and her hugging, right? So it was these four women walking about to go inside the show. This is this the concert. She was gonna let them go through their couple. But what what would have, what happened was the girl was hating. Cause she ain't go she ain't going to show with no man. That's all it could have been. I mean, cause the way she said it. Why else would you say something like that? Scratch off for one hundred dollars. Look, bam. Off a five dollar scratch off. That's what I was scratch off crazy. You know, I had the fat scratch off fee with this game right here. What man? It's paying three dollar five dollar scratch offs, man. I was addicted. Just cause I wanted to spell some words. Most ever won was five hundred dollars off a scratch off. Look at me, y'all. This one I was fighting that loss. Put the thousand dollar suit. So you buy the suit, which is the jacket and the pants together. You buy the shirt separate. You buy the tie separate. The shirt could be eighty dollars. The tie could be seventy dollars. Look at me. Look how cool I look. You know what I mean? I got that West Philly look. Wait, what I'm huh? This girl, Nunu. It's like three or four dial houses that came out with Barbie, right? And this girl got every last one. They all cost $300 a piece. One of them, the toilet flush and the swimming pool on the side. Like, no bullshit. Like, look, she would go in Walmart. We went to Walmart like every two days. Go get anything you want. And sometimes I tell her she's going to only spend $20. So she's going to the toy section and spend anywhere from $20 to $40. Every time, like, no bullshit. Go ahead. Running around and trying to find her, keep up with her. We going in for one thing with her mom. She wanna spend four or five hundred dollars in that motherfucker. Shopping, buying food and everything. Yeah. Baby girl got that she got that thing. She ain't just taking pictures. Y'all seen the pictures of her. Man. I gave this to a young boy, man. Championship joint. I paid twenty dollars for the Eagle thing. Yo, I mean Eagle uh football. He just started scuffing up and we wanna up playing football. Him and his brother. I used to buy them stuff they need for football practice, like the football helmet, you need a visor on it, a tinted visor, so you can have some tint and like some pads for their back, some pads for their ribs and shit like that. I was buying a little shit that they needed. And one time I ain't have a car, I would actually pay a cab, a taxi driver, to take me down to Models to buy all this shit for them. They ain't realize how I was getting down there. They ain't know that I was driving down there. No. These are some of the trophies of me and my two brothers. My brother Seiko swimming trophies. And probably, well, they the same trophies, so this man might get team trophies. And the majority of trophies is mine anyway. Probably like one of, well, I could say probably one, two, three of these trophies is Mikey's the rest of mine. I probably have like 12, 13 trophies all together. And it was bigger basketball trophies than football trophies. This is my football trophy. Mikey football trophy was way bigger than this, but he had a real crown, like a king crown, like right here, that he gave to Ashland for 25 diamonds. This is all from Frankfurt. Had all the trophies. He one of the championship football trophies and everything. And my mom had these and patent leather pumas I gave my son. Patent leather pumas. The doors. I forgot who I gave these to. I wore these once. But I forgot who I gave it to. My nieces, they big now. This is a deal, right? You buy a pair of sneakers and you buy the next pair for a dollar. So I paid $160 for these ACG sneakers, sneaker boot joints. I only paid $100 for these Jordans because the Jordans were like $130. So bands I paid $160 for this. The next pair was a dollar. On Tarsdale and Erie, the city blue in that little plaza, I gave these away. And I gave these away. Somebody wear some a few times. Boy, Montana, French Montana, when we had him on, when he was hosting something, he like all the way up, he had these on on the stage. So I wore them once. Wore them once. See, if somebody come on over my house, in laws or or my brothers or somebody, what I would do is, if they down when they look, I tell them to follow me up to my room, and I give them like 10 pair of sneaks, 10 pair of pants, 10 pair of sweatpants, sweat hoodies, 
Like, I would really like jackets and all that shit. Like, I really look out for people, man. No bullshit. And they're like, damn, I, was, yeah, I gave a lot. I had like 20 pair of different Jordans that I didn't give away, man. Like, I don't treasure anything. Because I know that shit ain't going to last forever. Like, think about it. Say if I still had these two pair, right? I, they would still look the same. But they just be in a box, sitting. Because I probably wouldn't wear them like that. Oh, this is my car. When I had the, the Maxima joint. Nissan Altima, 2014. You see that speed joint say 160? That joint say 260. A lot of people don't got it on a car that say 160. It might say 140, but to say 160, that means this car can open up. And it's a push button. Push button. You know? Look at that beard, man. They mad at me because my shit grow. They mad at me because we went to Wildwood right here. And that's when I was going to get the books and giving books away to the kids. Buying books for them and everything. Books only like 50 cents or 25 cents. I was take, getting all them books. You got me fucked up. I'm buy all these books and give them to the kids. See, see them books? These are my twin nephews. My brother, my brother Red's kid. This, you know, the girl Rocky that rap. These are little twin brothers. They look just like her. Look at him. Yeah, they're getting a haircut, and I ran into him like my little nephews, man. Yeah. That was me in my bedroom. Mikey Roll, my twin brother. I must be at my doctor's office, about to get my perks. I think I was getting 15s or 10s, and I took a picture of my waves and everything. Doctor said he started giving me prescription for Percocet because when I took a urine, it wasn't in my system. This is down eighth and dime, my cousin Carla, eighth and dime reunion. Them down eighth and dime and reunion. We got our water ice business. This one, you get the water ice, when you spray the joint like that, I just got to buy ice every day. And I buy like 50 pretzels a day right out in front of my house. I was making money, but the first week, I was giving water ice away to like 20 kids on the block. Like, no bullshit. 21 to 20 kids every day. My woman was like, why are you keeping that water ice away, water ice away for free? I said, you're going to see. So, a week go by, and then this lady walk up to me. They got kids on the block. She said, I don't mind spending my money with you because you always gave my kids free water ice. I said, see, it works. See, that was the water ice. All that ice and all that, yup. And the kids are running around. Think about it. If kids don't got money to pay for something, other kids do, and they outside playing, they're going to feel left out. They're going to feel awkward, and there's going to be a fucked up emotion for them, and they're going to never forget that. But if you give it away for free, They'll never forget you. They'll never forget that moment in their life. And then they'll play together happily because they got something in common. They all got free water ice. But I ain't get away the pretzels for free unless somebody asked me for a pretzel. But I didn't get away from it. They used to be lined up like it was free lunch. This this is at the water ice place where we got the ice at. The ice place. And they had a, a fucking, no bullshit. These are real sneakers. And they like size 30 or something. Like, no bullshit. Like, these are real sneakers, man. Like, think about it. From here to here is like, probably like eight feet. Eight feet. Like, yeah, so that's probably like 20 something. You know what I mean? But 30, that low shit. When, uh, what's that place called? What's the name of that restaurant, y'all? Ah, it's ah. Oh, I like. I love this shirt. I don't know what I did with this shirt, man. The Indian feathers, and it's a a bear. I thought I was the chief, so I put the chief shirt on. Oh, damn! What I got up there, Jordans. 
Pumas. I can't remember what they is. Oh, these is, I think, Polo. I think these are. Damn. I for, damn, what I do with these sneakers? I gave a lot of this shit away, y'all. No bullshit. Pumas. Nike. These right here is um Kevin Durant's. I get, I had so many. Look, look, look at the patent levers. Remember the patent lever Gully City had? I had, I told you, I had the patent levers. You know, I'm going to show you a picture. Thought I was lying. They the real patent lever sneaks that Gully TV say he just bought. I'm Ben Adam, Air Maxes. Air Maxes. I so much different. Feelies. These must be Adidas right here. I ain't really sure, but I don't know what I did with these. I remember giving these away, but I forgot who I gave them to. But these Kevin Durant's. They was like red, white, and blue. I gave them to my brother there. I remember that. But it's just crazy how these, I think they, the, if I ain't mistaken, they look like the Michael, I don't know if they Michael Jordans, though. But the Michael Jordans I had, they, they y'all gonna see them. Y'all gonna see them. But look at the patent leathers, though. But I should say, it's gonna, they're probably gonna say seven years ago. Oh, they ain't got no um, comment on here. But y'all see them sneakers, though? Now, hold up. Damn. That's baby girl jump. That shit look totally different now. Nothing but sneaks. You put like 50 pair sneaks on this shoe, right? Even broccolis. I wanted them Adidas up there. They the Kobe Bryant's. I wanted them Adidas up there. That that. It was these Adidas, right? They going just crazy. I bought these in New York. I gave them away to my homie Doug. These force, these Nikes right here. That's suede. That's suede right there. And that's real leather right there. But the sole, that sole right there, that look like eraser. You know what's crazy, man? I like them now, but when I bought them, I ain't like them. Buffet. Oh, you eat crab buffet. We went to Sesame Street. My homie, um, what's his name, had a wedding. Had that polo shit on. My homie got married and uh, look at my Jones I had on. Level gated sandals, all white. Vaughn got married in Virginia. We thought we, we thought we was in... Virginia, we was in Maryland. I got that linen on. That's all linen. Yeah, you know I mean, that was the bill. I let them keep the change. Seafood, all you eat. Look. All you eat, crab, seafood. I said, ain't that crazy? All you can fucking eat, man. Look at this shit, man. I don't eat crabs, though, so. All you eat, buffet, man. In Maryland. Polo. I got them polo jaws on, polo shorts, polo shirt. Had a ball over there, man. I was eating for real. I was just like, we was at Amber. So this here in Maryland, Buffet Amber's. Thank me later when y'all go there. This is another restaurant. That's what I had, some, some fish cakes. My dad, a kick, Sesame Street, Dave and Buster's. Out, out of my mind. Look at my eyes, y'all. Hitting thirties in me for. <laughs> I don't know. I'm probably just looking like it because my dude looking like say we just just having some fun, but in the kitchen wavy up. Damn, look at them waves though, man. Man, Mikey got the same waves like that, man. That good shit. Good shit lollipop. Damn, okay, sky blue horse, pink polo. Who show is this? It might have been at one of them. I forgot who show it was. Oh, this was at Muhammad Ali. Funeral. No, that's me with the thousand dollar suit on at Muhammad Ali funeral in Kentucky. We in Kentucky. 
I'm gonna fuck around my Lee crib. Right on, brother, right on. Look at me, man. We get money, man. Traveling. So when you travel, man, it's like nothing like traveling. See, Muhammad Ali Memorial Service, Friday, June 10th, 2016, 2 p.m. Kentucky. Fee, upper level. But I told you, when I got in there, I snuck all the way to the bottom and was sitting next to Don King and them. I got them Tommy Hill glasses on. I was sharp out there. That's Muhammad Ali. Crazy grew up and they painted pink. It's like a museum now. Ali, Kentucky. Yeah, I traveled everywhere, y'all. Like, I had a ball. Look, the Ali Center. Visiting bus drop. All service delivery. You know, I filmed it and everything. Muhammad Ali Center. This is our West Philly. Fatter, my homie, our West Philly from 50, from 56 and Master. He was on Land Down Avenue. We was doing some business. When I went there up there to see him to do some business with him, this, this, some house he was in, this woman had, somebody had all these kittens. And he showed it to me. I took a picture of this female cat feeding her babies, man, in the trenches of West Philly. Me and my female cousin, she played, she, I think she played for Kentucky. She played college ball. That was my oldest daughter right there, y'all. My oldest daughter, Quilla. My oldest daughter from Frankfurt, my son. My daughter, Nunu. And she got that polo shit on too, by the way. One of my birthday parties. Beer. Some more shit for the party. On the cob. That's that macaroni and cheese before it go into that, you know what I mean? Oven, that charcoal. That's how I do well. When he changed something when he went on his prime. And he rented that motherfucking joint cost, what? 6000 to rent this Rolls Royce behind him. That's a friendly day camp, West Philly. Look at that thing, man. Look at that thing, man. He's up Southwest doing it, man. 58th Street, stand up. 58th Street. Damn. Spent that, dropped that bread on my young man, man. Did it big that day. You know what I mean? Come on, man. We was doing it, man. Hockey was doing it out here, man. Y'all got to see the time when I went to the strip club with Dave from Southwest at the Light Out. I'm going to show you them videos, too. This is me riding in the Disney World, I think. Yep. No, I think we was going to Las Vegas. Vegas. Hold up. It was Vegas. Just the food, some Japanese food inside. What's the name of that restaurant? No, it's a, it's a joint called the Westgate. The Westgate Hotel. You got to catch that monorail thing to get um to the to the strip. It looked like this is my daughter. When ran into my daughter out there, Porsche. We took some pictures together. We flipped it up on a plane. We had a ball, man. Like, I really, it was cold on that plane, though. I think I slept more without having perks in me. When I got there, you see I had the sequence flyer shirt on, the sequence right there. Got off and bought me a cigar. Yeah, you know I mean, you paid a boy some money, just paying some money just to take you three blocks up the street. Because, you know, when you get off the airplane in Vegas, it'd be people there waiting in limousines to pick you up. So they picked us up, 
took us to the um, store to buy some shit real fast. We flicked it up. Then went to our hotel and all. It's like the experience just to land in Las Vegas and a limousine coming to pick you up. These joints I had, like, 2016, you know, my, my brother and them had all the sneakers. This is, I think, a 10, but I gave these away to my people. But I had them. I had every color. I had so many pairs of sneakers, man, because my folks, they were stealing everything, man. They was taking everything. I just was buying them. Like, look at these Bo Jacksons. These are Bo Jacksons right here. You know, and she was 34 in the back. I wound up giving these away. I was giving it to dudes that was less fortunate because when somebody ride up on me and they got all the sneakers and they only want $50 to $60 for $200, $200 pair of sneakers and $20 for little kids sneakers, I'm, I'm buying everything. I know they legit. I know they real. And inside this room right here was the lab. We made a lot of shit at where I made a lot of money. And this was in South Philly. See, I got the camouflage on. I made a lot of money in South Philly, man. Like, look, this when we went away to get shit, copyrights and patent. Went to DCM. We went to, uh, see, U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. This was in Virginia. We went to Virginia and we went to, to D.C., Washington, D.C. That's my mom and my aunt Nisi. The two queens up. And how we get back there? The two queens of north. Hold up. Did we get this far down? Nope. I'm about to get to this. Hold up. Since I... Damn, I ain't get up. I thought I showed y'all that. Hold up. That's me at this baseball game. The Phillies. When I went to the the Stanley Cup and the Flyers in the Stanley Cup, I was getting all that money. You know what I mean? See, I kept my shit braided, my face trimmed up, had me some tree. That little jersey right cost a hundred dollars. And I had a chance to meet the Flyers and a black hockey player. One day, me and my homie Twine went out, and they was in the vault. But they didn't let us take no pictures. They, to, they get drunk and they, they down to earth, man. Like, we was really sitting there talking to the Flyers' whole team, man. And Twine, my homie, I show you the bitch way. The black Flyer, Simmons, he gave... What is his name? Simmons, he gave... Uh, Twine his phone, him, his real phone. And Twine would not stop calling him. You know, Twine, a fitness trainer... Like, you know, because he'd be around rich people. So for him, they, his phone number, that shit was huge, man. We really, and they, they short. They not even big people. They just, them uniforms and the hockey skates make them look big. But no, one of them, five, five, man. I couldn't believe it was a Brie or Gagne. I think it was Gagne. Like, this 2000... I think, this. I'm going to tell you right now, I think it's 2010, it's either 2010, 2011, or 2009, but in any way, I was eating off my phone, yo, I was doing good, man, look at this, man, my braids is done, my hair is done. Growing like I was doing, I was this fifth in Oregon Avenue inside the, the diner, the plaza. A ball out here, man. My twin brother, when he was three years old, we took some pictures. Mike, you know, you remind me of this picture with this haircut. <laughs> but when he had his hair cut, and the boy messed his hair up and he cut to the side. Eagles game, they play the Giants. Me inside the market. I miss that polo hat. I miss all my polo shit. Me at the Fantasia show. The hockey player in the restaurant with me. When I made Bell and got out, got that flash polo shirt on all white. 
rented this Malibu, took it back and got something else. And I was on a reach. It was 2010, 2011. That's got to be 2011 or 2012. Like 2011 in the wintertime. Bro, the Eagles beginning their season, they played Cleveland. I'm in the end zone, as you can see. Biggest shots. I look biggest shit in there. Like, God damn, I'm husky for real. 2013, 2013, got that Ralph Lauren shit all on polo, everything polo. Head to toe, though. Me and Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson played with the Eagles. Carolyn Tunstu, my brother, old girlfriend, nice to go with her sister. Her mom was a queen pin up Frankfurt. Me and Mike Jarrett, Fox News. I turned 41 even. I turned 40 even. One of my birthdays. I got suited and booted. Had them, look at them things. Crispies. All leather. Chucker Tim's. All black. Velour. Fila sweatsuit. Had the all white enclave. Then I had the all white one, all black one. And Mikey's birthday cake. Mikey, when he was younger, the football bank with Franklin Chargers. Mikey. That red. Me and Mom Dukes. Me on the steps on 18 rocks of the mansion. Waved up. Still loaded up. Still loaded down. Me and my son at the Sixers game. Me and my daughter and Logan popped up on her when, you know what I mean? In court, fighting a lawsuit. Representing my son. This was the close of arguments and all that, the last day of trial. Me and Mikey down. 15th and Chestnut, my brother Darryl, my mom took the pictures of us. We like seven years old, 1980. That's me, I was 19. This like November 92, December 92, or January 93. You see this shirt I got on? This, this collar shirt? This is a Ralph Lauren polo. Velour corduroy shirt. It's a corduroy velour polo. It got all these leaves and it like it look like it's all all them cut all like autumn, like fall autumn. That rust color is all them type of colors on that polo shirt. Fucking them up. Look at that man, nineteen. Don't even wanna fuck with me when I was nineteen, man. Like, come put anybody next to me at nineteen. Any picture. Sub-Zero, no homo. You say you pretty boy and all that. You don't look better than me, man. Look at this shit, bro. You know what I mean? With hair. I still have hair. This ain't no Stevie Harv, no Steve Harvey glue on wig, nigga. This the real deal. Steve Harvey tried to look like me. I ain't trying to look like him. Look at me, man. In the Cherokee. Flying around the Cherokee. 2017. Philly Trench Ball. They want to turn to Philly Trenches. <laughs> it's like I got my life together and I ain't doing that no more. Hey, y'all. Mount Cushmore, man. This brother from North Philly. That's a boxer. Act any comedian. Put me on Mount Cushmore. I was, you know, I was humbled and appreciated. Man, it's like a, this, this is big to me because it's like, I didn't know how good I was on the internet. So for him to put me up here with these guys that been on here before me, these three guys been on here before me. I was on the sideline watching them. Now everybody that's on here mention my name. They call it getting in where you fit in. <laughs> up here, yeah, look at them things I got on my feet, man. I told you I stayed with that shit on. Here, Max, is how I go. Polo shit. Polo hat. You know, I had the car it was all crazy. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, Sam. Every Avenue boy, what he got on his feet? Oh, yeah, he represented. He represented. I gave, I bought him these Kevin Durant trains, right? It's purple. And a little bit, I think, purple and like a 
aqua color blue and them, them joints is crazy. He went and bought a polo shirt. He was hype about and Norny was mad because Norny wanted them, right? But Norny came too late. He came on the block too late, right? He was mad as shit. He wanted them sneakers. Because I see, my thing is, no matter what they sell, I'm going to buy it because I know somebody can fit it. So I always get people gifts, man. So when you get somebody some shit like that, they appreciate it. And we just get money with me. This hat I lost in New York, man. It said Florida on it. I lost that. My all white fitted Eagle. I mean, my all fight, my all white fitted Phillies hat. And my black Raiders hat with the word Raiders on it, man. You see, you got some things on the Porsches. Porsches. Big Cheese just came home from the feds on 27 years. Southside T, Big Meats Brother. They was upstate together, in the fed together, and Southside T still talk to him to this day. And it's the famous Doc, one of the best basketball players and gangsters come out of North Philly. That took us down this island. And they was together. Got them uh, Adidas on. This the day I let both of them see the Draco. <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, let them carry that guitar for a minute. Look at me make a degree coming them got them diamonds. You know what I mean? Them diamonds on the side, but you got them, you see like I don't know them Pradas. A brand new Bally's hat. Ooh, Bally's. They were not fucking with me out here, man. But look at me in the club with that Jordan shit on. What? $100 for the pants, $100 for the jacket, $200 for the sneakers. It's Jordan's right there, man. I got that money in my pocket. See that money in my pocket, y'all? I'm going to show you all this shit real fast. Look at that money. See? You can tell I got money in my pocket because I can even put my hands in my pockets. And them pockets ain't that deep. I took a lot of pictures. So, you know, these $5 pictures, they might have been $10 at the time. I ain't really sure. Got that fitted eagle shit on. This was down Ken's and eating. I'm, I was no bullshit, no homo, but I'm husky though. I'm like built like a see, I'm solid. So you know if I like really like put hands on the nigga, they going to sleep. Look at me, man. Atlantic City, one of the cars, no homo. Look how big my legs is though. And I'm chilling with the Ray Bands on, and this hat fell off my head. I want to rise in Atlantic City. My daughter wanted me to get on. You got kids with you, man. You can't tell them no when they come to rides and shit. And she don't know that shit was expensive. You know what I mean? Motherfuckers, they charge you up, man. Shit, look at me, man. I was fried on this picture. <laughs> Flash Adidas jacket, man. Yeah, or they're back to these. This is my brother nephew. That's my brother grandson. And my twin brother grandson, and he looked just like my this one right here. He looked just like my son. This is my twin brother daughter son. And he got my son whole face and him. He got my whole face. He got between us y'all. Some shit happened, right? And he took one in the back, man. Yeah, young got hit before, man. Yup, that shit was on the news and everything. He's strong, though. You know what I mean? You can imagine when you grow up, you can tell somebody one of your stories is, when one of your war stories is, when you was two years old, somebody threw some at you, man, hitching you in your back with that burner. Shh, like, really got shot. Oh, my goodness. Well, not all of them. The majority of them is on these pictures, all these pictures right here. With mom dudes. Me and my daughter Porsche. Yeah. They say your kids look like the grandparents, right? But my daughter with these green eyes and everything, because them light eyes running my family because I got light eyes. But my mom mother was light like that with good hair and all that. So that's my mom back in the day. It's like 1982, me and my we in front of the gallery mall when we took this picture. That sheet again with the glasses off. My brother see cool me and my son. 
You know what I mean? And Nike shit on, Adidas, polo shirt. Mikey back in the day, my twin brother, with Drag and Big Ben, 1988 in the club with Eddie Bauer shit on. Eddie Bauer for the Eddie is petty. This in 2000, I think, 16. Just even between 2015, 2016. Got the all gray Ralph Lauren polo shirt. With the lime green fluorescent, like a fluorescent green polo horse. I got some, what's the gray? The gray cargoes, or gray, some type of pants I got on. And I got them 17s on. Them joints, all gray, a little bit of white in them. For the internet. Come on, man. They don't get no real in there. I mean, I'm moving out there, man. And my twin brother, 14 years old, 1987. He had a sweatsuit on. With the dark blue stripes, Chicago boy hat on. With the black letters say Chicago boys. This is how we looked back in the day, man. So just imagine. We moving like like this back in the day, competing with older guys, getting females and everything, man. So now I can look back and see, damn, now, now I understand why they was hating on me and my twin brother. No homo, we two pretty boys. We throw that shit on, we throw, we get money, we hustle. You know what I mean? We get in, we fit in, man. Like, come on, man. Be honest. Be honest, man. Ain't no homo. Man, my brother was some nice looking young boy, man, back in the day. Nice eyes, chin, cheekbones, light brown eyes, light hazel eyes. Throw that shit on. Always smiling. Look, look, 89, two years later. He got the cool Mo D glasses on. Nautica. Nautica. Come on. Na look, the Nautica ski jacket. Gap short, gap shirt, gap shirt, D to ankle socks, Gucci's, high top Gucci's. This black piece part right here, that's that's the picture. But y'all got these high top Gucci's. City blue bags, he did some shopping. Ran to my sister Sabrina. Big ass earrings on. Chilling. Yeah, I mean, you know, homo, look how I, I always was in shit. Man, who that right there, though? That hockey raw, though? The twin, though? Salute, salute, salute. Let me give you that wrench, man. Give y'all these wrenches. Then I know y'all in the building. I got y'all. What do he say? Do you know any of the Jenkins family from Frankfurt? Yeah, I know all the Jenkins from Frankfurt. Stevie Boy, yeah, I know Stevie Boy. Stevie Boy, your uncle. That's my that's my old G, man. The boy who killed Pac was from P and G. What do you say? Kids look like you good stuff. They said kids look like you good stuff. Whatever that means. Any boot camp stories? No, no, boot camp. My little cousin Mike Mike was in boot camp. I'm at the interview, Mike Mike. He from Delon Dolphin. From the picture, the picture on the thumbnail. Yo, Mike Mike would have been in that picture, but Mike Mike was locked up. But yeah, though, I'm glad y'all watched me and all that. What he said, I had the silver joint. Hey, listen, um, I gotta give you a wrench. Oh, you got a wrench, but. Stevie Boy, man, he he was like one of the gangsters from Rich Island that moved up to Frankfurt. But he the one showed me and my brother the, the ropes and gave us the game, man. You know, we call him Salim. But he the one got us in the JBM, man. He the real deal, man. Look at me, y'all, a few years ago before I turned 50. Y'all got at least, this is my niece, 
my niece right here, and my, my sister, my brother Daryl, and me. The crazy thing is, look how they look alike, and look how me and my niece look alike, and me and him brothers, and they sisters, and father is our oldest brother. I was sweating, man. I'm preaching. <laughs> But, you know, my niece, you know, I'm the third uncle, though, you know what I mean? I have all the parties, all the parties, pay for all the parties. And they just show up. I just, all I got to do is show up. You ain't got to bring no alcohol, none of that. What you mean bring, uncle? What you mean bring? Just bring yourself and bring them kids. I ain't bringing the kids. Just bring them. So that's what I do. I make the money and all that, you know, and then I just, you know, tell everybody to come to the party. This Doc brother, he the other one, the other brother that gave us the game, Tom Tom, She, Bill Bill Fatty, my low life wolf pack, my wolf pack low life gang. You know, even though it started in Frankfurt, but it was like, it's because of him and his brother that solidified everything because they kept us together, man. And, you know, and my brother Ray Ray, when he had nowhere to go, he stayed over their house. They from Never Norris. And this is my twin brother, Mikey, daughter. His other, there's two daughters. Both of them. My brother Bean's daughter, my old brother Bean's daughter, my brother Daryl's daughter, my, my uncle Jumbo, my uncle Jack daughter. And him right here, that's Keisha's son. She got two sons. One named Nasir, which the one that he looked like my son, Hakeem. Her youngest son is named after me, Hakeem. And the boy right here, my my niece, she ain't got no kids, but her son right here, my brother Mike, two grandsons is in this picture. Right here and, and right here, right here. To me, he look like Holyfield. I don't know why he always was him. And she got, that's her son, and she just had a daughter. You know what I mean? And her brother is the one who used to be with A.R. Ab. And I forget what they called him, little Tracy. But he got killed on Germantown in Indiana. And somebody walked up to him and shot him in his head. But he had his gun on him. But he, you know, and it's like on him, but on him, like his hand on the trick and everything. And that was a big situation. But her brother. Got a lot of pictures. Her brother got a lot of pictures with ARF. She just had a daughter too, by the way. 12 in Somerset. They're all from the same neighborhood. My brother daughters, but they just got different moms. This is my brother Daryl's daughter. With her son, the one I said got shot in his back when he was two, him. You know what I mean? And my uncle Jumbo Jack daughter right here, Kia. This is in my backyard near the back, you know. With the trees and the gate at, and the trampoline right here, and the big tent. I mean, the pool might have been out, I ain't sure. Y'all know that's me playing foot basketball on the basketball team. Brian Whitmore, Coach Milton, Eric Simmons, Pee Wee, and Matthews. Y'all seen that, that trophy, but this runner up. And look how big that trophy is. My brother's trophy, Mike, way bigger than that one. Nine nine when she was little, she's seventeen now. He he twenty three now. He and Symphony, she like eleven now. No, she be her birthday. Her birthday in August. She got a birthday coming up. They look like her hair right here, right? But that ain't her hair. That's fur connected to that crown, which is a birthday hat. But she do got a lot of hair, but. That's fur in front of her hair. The birthday hat. So the polo shirt came to show love and let them have, let Nana go to her birthday party. Man, hot poured off. Cause you know, my baby mom had a, a new duty in her life and all that. And my daughter Nana said the boy kept staring at her. And she ain't with the dude no more. So her mom crossed me for another dude and the dude crossed her. Ain't that something? That's Nana right now. The one I just seen out here. She graduated from eighth grade. Now she graduated from high school next year. You know what I mean? Show us the white people graduating. Yeah. 
Shit, all my kids graduating. My, my Yeezys on. Proud, you know. Support your kids, support your family. This is the same one that had the honor roll, little certificate. Now I'm gonna get a straight A Son. See, now y'all see the front of my crib compared to when I showed y'all my mom's crib. Grass and all that. You see grass in front of my crib. You see steps. So that boy Gully TV, man, you was tripping, man. My mom right there. It's my mom right here. Right? So my mom got, I don't know if she had a, what's that? I think it's an umbrella or something. So my cousin Jack, my brother Daryl. My cousin Kia, which is my mom, brother, daughter. My brother sake, we just got out of jail. My cousin Shelly. The one I showed y'all that was there with the light eyes. My brother Daryl's daughter. This is his daughter right here. My brother Bean's daughter. My brother Bean's daughter. My cousin Mike, Mike. My son. And we, we got, this is some of us. And, you know, just taking a picture. My brother came home. We also celebrate my cousin Walter passing away. So it was kind of crazy to celebrate that. Now, this is a throwback. Mikey, my cousin BB, my cousin Wahida, Levithan, Narsh Projects, sitting on the project pole right there. And that's the playground where everything went down there when they had the metal ring, like the metal um, nets. Now, now we 18 months older than her. Remember I showed you my cousin BB? And another guy on that picture, I said, in Arizona, and she a queen bee out there. Well, they moved from North Fleet to West Fleet to Arizona in 1983. And she, they know everybody out of Arizona. And when DMX came to Philly, he was, she was meeting him at the airport, my cousin BB. And BB and him stayed guarded up. You know, it's like 78, 79 right now. You know what I mean? It's back in the day. Damn. And this is me twine. I zoomed in, went on in front of his crib. The one I see used to get us in the games and all that was all stocky. To, and he used to work in the gym, training people. This us in like 2009, 2010. Blue hat on, white, low hoodie. Yeah, he's on the sea. So he trenched his hair going down my back, my braids. Got my hair inside the joint. Nice little beard. You know, 2010. Doing my thing, doing your thing. So when they talk trash about hockey ball, they about to get it right, man. They about to make sure they tell that story right. If y'all want to tell it at all. Y'all want to get the athlete. He was the star running back on the team. And I took his spot. He was the star running. He's the fullback. Biggest shit, Wayne Rice. But he couldn't keep his weight down. And then they gave the rock to me. They let me ball. Romeo threw the missiles down the field. I caught him. Tyrone Farns, when y'all see on the picture of my brother, when he's in the bank with pitching, this is him older. Him, him, and my cousin CJ, the one I took the picture with. And I'm a Frankfurt, and I got that Fila on, Fila supposed to one, but I got the, the tank top on the white beater. That's him on the picture. See my cousin Clifford Waddy, him, Tyrone Farns. And Wayne Rice and probably the twin that's on the side of me. Right here, the twin. Right here. They went on and went back-to-back -back championships at Frankfurt High School. Now, mind you, he was the star running back for Frankfurt High School, right? Tyrone Forrest was the star running back for Frankfurt High School, right? Him right here. 
But when we played on the same team, he only scored 12 touchdowns. I scored 32. But he was the man in high school because I didn't go to Frank High School. So if I went to Frank High School, he wouldn't have had no shine. I'd have took all the shine from him. Look at my chin, though. Straight chin, solid chin. Everybody else, I ain't talk about nobody else, but I got that solid, strong chin. And that means everything in facial features. That's your bone structure. Show your strength. The neck, see that neck? All muscle. I got a 17 inch neck. Mike Tyson got a 19 inch neck. Damn it, hands big and powerful. I was really him, y'all, in football. Like, really him. Look how small my shoulder pads is compared to his. Because I told my cousin Peter he played with a 65 pounds. Let me hold your, 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 your shoulder pads. Because I ain't want nothing big on me. Because I want to be able to move around and get loose. This me up the hike super max during juvenile life. They took our clothes from us and told us to wear blues. I was big as shit to be at 18, 19 years old, 20 years old, up that joint. This is cafeteria where we eat at, but it's a living room too. I used to always thought I ain't look right in these pictures and all that, but the whole time I really did look. I looked at, but I guess because I'm looking at myself. But now that I look back at it, man, I was a teenager on this picture. Wolfing, but I still. Now I understand why people was a little jealous of me. And my chin there ain't no half a chin. That's hair. It's like a shadow, right? I know that's my let my hair grow. That's my sooner. It look like it's a shadow, don't it? It don't look like my chin little, but that's hair right there. I think it's hair. Yeah, that's hair, yeah, that's hair y'all. Oh, that's why don't we freezing up on me? Come on with this freezing shit. Oh, this is hair right here. I don't know if it's freezing up on y'all. This when my son came to see me. He was hyped to see me. You know what I mean? It's little, my son, when he was a little dude. This when I was up there getting money, like, with the gambling ring. Visiting room. Had my braids. My son come see me all hyped. Got his hand balled up. Got his little Nikes on. Me and my mother. This one, I don't think I was in the mods. As a matter of fact, I might have been just two braids to the back. Look at me, y'all. This is like 1998. Greatest for it. The picture I just showed y'all, this one I was a parole violator during time. This before I came home the first time down Greatest for it in the vision room. Looking like a million dollars. I was like 24 or 25 on this picture. You know, my family again. Me and Mike and JB and E in the middle. Mike, you got that big ass hand bone chain on his neck. The suit jacket, a t shirt, the Raiders hat. And I got this John said, made in the Philippines jacket. The collar was all leather, like soft butter leather all the way around the collar. And I forgot what kind of material this was, but it was a jacket. Mikey bought out of John Wanamaker's, which is Macy's now. And I had the slacks on, the cream colored slacks. And I had a 49er hat on. And we was up in Chuck's. I'm on a run. Mikey down with JBM and all that. I'm with JBM too, but I'm on a run though. This is 12 years old, going up D.C. to see my brother, Beans. First day of school, first day of weighing, that's me. We weighed in like for football the first day. That's me with the Nike shirt on. And that's Mikey with his Nike shirt on. Let's see how we're identical, but when he smiles, we different than me. It's crazy. I want to go see my brother Beans, though, right? Mikey with the hand bone on. 89.
the Rolex on with the pinky ring. Tell you to be jagged off. You up in Chucks. Yeah. Oh, that's me. That's Mikey. Check the forms out, though. I was husky as a young boy. That stuff that's on the picture. I don't know. That's the somehow the picture got messed up. But this picture is not made out of paper. It's made out of some type of cardboard or something. That's what it felt like. That type of picture. But this is when we took pictures. When our baby pictures. And he was premature. And good shit though. All the women like, I used to change the type. I used to change the type. Mikey, now eighth and diamond, my cousin Monique, my baby mom, um, Kenyatta, Tiffany, my cousin Tiffany, Mika. This 89 is summer. Mikey came down here from Richard Island. He got the straw in his mouth. The flash cap shirt on, the wine shorts. Cousin Monique, man. Man, sister Tammy, rest in peace. They used to let me and Mikey bring a lot of females over their house back in 88, from 86, like 84 to like 89, 88. We used to bring females over their crib from the dollar park. They had all the girlfriends and all the girls like the man Mikey. See how they surrounded him? <laughs> Yo. Yo. Man, Mikey, we were them boys, these young boys, though. This picture right here I took when I came home in 05 for any time. When I got in the game and got on my feet and was buying true religion jeans every two days and everything they had in the store, all these Ed, Ed Harley motorcycle hats. I had the ones with the rhinestones on it, the ones without the rhinestones. And these hats cost $150 a piece. And that's back in 2005. The jacket cost $1,000 or $700, but inside the jacket, it's a murder ink jacket, meaning that it's a tattoo jacket. Inside the jacket, inside the sleeves, inside the pockets, everything is tattooed. Oh, I can wear reverse with all these tattoos in it. I gave it to my number. My cousin Key, I showed you, gave it to her dad. It's a good leather jacket, there, man. And I see the sneaks I got on there. Alligator on the side of that boy from Atlantic City. A little small alligator, Azad, Argyle, whatever they call him. But y'all got to see the one that had the rainbow true religions on. The white thermal shirt on. This Ed Harley hat with the rhinestones in it with the double with the pitchfork. I got the high top Gucci's on. Power 99 had a 2006 New Year's Eve party. And every two seconds, the number at the door was going up. We got in the door. It was 50, 50 dollars to get in. By the time I got my peoples in from 50 even Samson, they wanted 100 dollars at the door. So I was getting people in, then I opened up the side and let like at least 10, 12 people in, man. We had a ball that night. I'm talking about all the pictures I took on that night. Some of them are sitting on somebody man on piece of money. I'm talking about we took the flies joint, man. I'm talking about this one pitch I took. I got champagne bottle in one hand, another champagne bottle in another hand. And I think I got them both sitting on each one of my knees. I'm on this sitting on this stool. And I got my head, my Ed Harley hat on backwards, right? When I got my Ed Harley hat on backwards, I got these road bands on my wrist because I spun it like probably three three thousand, something like that. Cause I, I spent a lot of money that night, right? But the picture came out so good and clear. I was like a rock star. So I got my shadow. That's why they kept thinking I was Jim Jones, because I had my high had my shadow. Now this is a style right here, man. Nobody wanna fuck with me, man. Yeah, I mean, look at these. I had to get these taken in because they were so long. These is the cowboy fit. And when they wide at the bottom, what? I was doing my thing, man. Like, if you don't know, you know. If you don't know, 
Now I'm at 3.7 million. That's what I was betting. Here in the first place, I don't want to get on here. Five. Oh, this one I came in for 100%. First place. Kobe's on the wire. Puma's on the wire. My brother, say, can we buy all these expensive glasses and lose every pair of them? Zell's and they thing. The first Philly trenches hat, even though it was a Nike hat, put Philly trenches on top of that. You know, and that's a heck of a logo. Sneaks on a wire, man. I seen Goey TV in his backyard. He got all this shit, this mural painted in different colors. But then you could tell he added sneaks on the wire because it was all black. They be copying off the kid, man. All right, y'all, I'm going to end this, man. Thank y'all for watching me. Philly trenches, Philly trenches, Philly trenches.